This is a HeadGum Podcast. On this month's Patreon bonus select episode, oh my God, it's Jungle the Jungle OU. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cabin. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. Detective. <laughs> Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in as always. And thank you for supporting our Patreon at the $5 level or up. Yeah, man. Yeah. And this is tying into an episode we're doing on Wild Hogs, which might right. come out before or after this. So, so, so you, you will, will get a double dose of Tim Allen. And those cheap fucks on the main feed will only get oh, one Tim Allen. That's really not a selling point. <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> yeah. dude. I don't know how you're making them feel like they're lucky right now. <laughs> I'm just trying, putting that out there. Try to put value into this thing. Yeah, see now the regular people listening on that fuddy duddy main feed sure. just get one Tim Allen. Yeah. But you guys get twin Allen. Oh, dude, two Tim Allen's making out. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so like a, Tool like a, time, my friend. <laughs> so like a thicker, uh, sturdier wild hogs, Tim Allen. Oh, yeah, yeah, like Cruises in that picture up. they got snapped by the paparazzo. You remember that? They're all like in a lake or some Just shit. Just covered in leather. Get that- some young German artists. Go to the Berlin Wall. Paint that. And Over the a, Putin Trump ooh. thing, paint that. <laughs> and then a, back. A scrawny top of his powers, jungle to jungle, Tim Allen. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Who would be the top? Who would be the bottom? I don't yeah, know. Well, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Either way, it comes with a, a hefty helping of. <laughs> it, it and both of and both of them constantly saying, "I'm not doing this. This isn't <laughs> happening. I'm not doing this." More power. But this one in particular is the Disney film starring a cocaine salesman. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 no! He yes. was a cocaine. Cocaine salesman that rolled on everybody. Oh, wait. So he's a cocaine rat? Yeah. Oh, yes. Cocaine rat, D- Tim Dick. Tim is, Dick, by the way. He is the world's most famous cocaine mule, Tim Allen. Yeah. No, without question. The most successful of all. Oh, well, he got pinched. He did. I bet but there's he- one dude that was like, I never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> they all think it's Tim Allen, but it was me. No, it's oh. Paul Giamatti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By right, the way, I-, I, got, I got three pounds of horse here. I'll I gotta never- unload this shit. They're gonna break my fucking legs, man. Well, I never suspected old Paul. <laughs> ever since, ever since. No, Ever officer. Since Kevin Smith made such a stink about the seat. I can sit wherever I want. Then I want the bad tweets. No, officer. I swear, I'm a farting baby powder. <laughs> we needed that money. <laughs> Holy shit! By the way, Jungle the Jungle was from 1997, directed by a dude named John Pasquine. <laughs> Who you did? know what? I'm going to go to McDonald's and put all this cocaine in a cup and drink it. <laughs> John Pasquine. Oh, God, that's gross. Big John Pasquine. He has the most unfortunate piece of IMDb trivia I've ever seen. Really? He's dead. <laughs> no, 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 he's no. directing Roseanne episodes now, and he directed Roseanne episodes back in the eighties and nineties, and Last Man Standing, well, and Home Improvement. Well, that's dude. It links back to this sweet bit of trivia, okay. man, that Nazi just says members? frequently works with Tim Allen. Oh, no. ew! <laughs> it's yes. enough that someone made that part also, of your trivia. Also directed six episodes of Dan Aykroyd's Soul Man. Oh, dude, I probably watched Whoa. all six of them. I was Woo. watching a lot of Soul Man in the nineties. You know, oh, a thick you. dude on a motorcycle holy shit yeah dude <laughs> fucking wild hogs <laughs> wild suspension on that motorcycle <laughs> so for those who don't remember this is the movie my from- bike broke yeah yeah there was a lot of that <laughs> oh well because it was so Got dumb. flat here he was a fucking motorcycle riding priest on that show gotcha. yeah. Wow. yeah he's a badass yeah it was stupid. real badass stupid stupid city sorry jungle to jungle correct with uh, a two in it by the way not with a yes. two well, yeah because you know if you think about it manhattan is kind of a jungle as well yeah I didn't get that until right now. It's, the, it's <laughs> okay, the, really? the concrete jungle where I've heard. Oh, the asphalt jungle. Dreams are made of. What? Yeah, or no. Die. Or what concrete made. jungle. <laughs> well, there was a film called Asphalt Jungle, and it's it was quite good. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good movie. You can blow it out your asphalt. <laughs> I would love to. I wish I had that, a- that power. By the way. No, is- it's powder. It's baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Krippendorf's tribe. No, big no. point of confusion. Big point of confusion because they are essentially the same 
pretty racist movie. Um, <laughs> this is Kippendorf Lights. Yes. Kippendorf's tribe was Richard Dreyfus. He's a professor, <laughs> and he like goes to Africa to like find a tribe. Doesn't find it because right. his wife dies or something. It's like an unknown tribe, right? Yeah, like and then he discover passes, some. He films his family in like face paint and like loincloths, oh, and passes that dude. off. What is, as the lost tribe. How do you ever think you're going to get away with something like that? <laughs> That's no. outrageous. That's downright outrageous. 1995 said that was a good idea. Two things. People One. People loved that movie, by the way. People loved that what, movie. What, Krippendorf's Tribe? Yeah, it's a stay yeah. tuned. It's a it's stay a tuned. Time. And it might be a Patreon only stay tuned. Maybe you guys want to hear it and those other fucks don't. I don't know. <laughs> Second thing, Krippendorf's Light sounds like a discontinued ba- brand of cigarettes. Yes, it oh, does. Yes. Oh. Me- Krippendorf's Light. Uh, when you want something that goes down smooth, but won't offend the lady folk at the honky tonk. African tobacco, or is it? <laughs> in reality, we only put the bad stuff in. You know, they mix it with the tobacco and all the other niceties. We put in only the toxic sludge. <laughs> hey, at least they're, off light. At least they're honest. <laughs> uh, so this is a movie where Tim Allen uh, it goes to South America to get a divorce finalized uh, and finds out, whoops, he's got a little son played by introducing Sam Huntington mm-hmm. Or as I like to call old Sam Huntington, the Shia LaBeouf that never was. <laughs> is he happy about that, though? Because Shia's yeah. pretty crazy now. No, you it, don't want to be Shia. You, so, well, it's, oh, it's a tough... rich as hell, man. That's, that's the is thing. The that's thing. the thing. It's a tough middle ground for old Sam Huntington because on the one hand, Shia's bank account's probably doing all right. On the other hand, though, he's kind of one of the most hated people in the yeah. country. Oh, for sure. Uh, and Sam Huntington seems like an all right guy. And he's I, making money. He's been fucking constantly doing shit. I feel like if you, if that Superman Returns took off, we would know. So it took was. off to the skies. If it really, wait, wait, wait. Are you suggesting we would remember Jimmy Olsen who played? Yes, you Jimmy would be like, Olsen. oh, if he was, if there was like three of those movies, like, oh, we'd be like, and no, young Jimmy Olsen's in this movie. We would. Think, I think I would I, never remember that. I think though. Steve, you nailed it. Mm-hmm. I'd need at least three. Yes. To be like, oh, yeah, he was Jimmy Olsen in those that Brian Singer trilogy nobody likes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if it was just the two and then definitely the one, because when you said it when, before we went on the air, I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, it was in that movie. Yeah. Then, and then you're just like in the movie. But if not, then you're like, oh, I was Jimmy Olsen. Was he like a Nickelodeon kid or some shit? Uh, I mean, I, I, think I this mean, is this it. Disney, so... Yeah, well, I mean, probably you can't cross them lines, huh? And, I mean, he's been like the supporting friend in a hundred thousands of these Detroit movies. Rock City he's in. Yeah. He's oh, like the, God. He's like the main yeah. kid. He's in, what was that goddamn movie? The Fat Nerds? No. Um, oh, uh, oh, oh. Fanboys. Oh, oh. Fanboys. Fan Holy shit. Isn't those? he also the sidekick in Dylan Dog? Yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, God wait, damn it. wait, wait, wait. The what? zombie sidekick. He reunited with Superman? Well, yes, he did. Holy shit. That, maybe that's a stay tuned. I never saw Dylan Dog. Oh, it's quite we, something. It keeps coming up on this show only. <laughs> on this show only, you'll hear it. Hey, 24 episodes of Rosewood. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Is that like a cabinet making show? What happens? <laughs> Essentially, yes. If so, I would watch it. Uh, no, it was Morris Chestnut. He was doing Wait, stuff. Wait, is that a famed carpenter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Dude, oh, I just remembered the... Aside from watching this, I remembered what I most recently saw him in. Uh He's got like a garbage nothing role in that pointless movie, Sully. Oh, okay. He's like, yes, he is in that. He's one of the people on the airplane who like... He gets separated from his uncle, and I think either him or the uncle, one of those motherfuckers, is wearing a newsboy cap. They Come are. Come on. It's terrible. That movie is terrible. He was in that Being Human show for a little while. Yeah. 52 episodes. 52 episodes. Man, the Sci-Fi Channel. Pick me up. Dude, pick <laughs> I mean, me up and give me 60. You That's can, what I want. You can secretly make a living at the Sci-Fi <laughs> Channel. You, can. you could you could have six episodes, six seasons in a movie and nobody would fucking you, know. That's the thing is you make them all the money in the world, but you go home for Thanksgiving, nobody knows what you're doing. Like, oh, you still got that office job. Like, no, I'm on the Sci-Fi <laughs> Channel. I'm the lead. Sci-Fi <laughs> Channel? Here's the thing: they just they dump money into any, every dumb project in the book. Why not us? Yeah, exactly. Why not? Why not just get us to make one of your tarantula versus people movies? Yeah. What's a show <laughs> on the BBC that like nobody in America likes but could like if it was worse? Age Gap Lover. <laughs> that, there you go. 
We can make the American version a narrative version of age gap lovers. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of tarantula versus people, I just Ooh. realized what I yeah. said was very uh, serendipitous. Right. Because yes. this movie is by and large just about a spider yes. and people happen to be around. <laughs> there it's are. all the people in this spider's life that it encounters <laughs> when it goes on a trip to the Big Apple. It really, it really is. There it's are a like spider movie. Spider in the City better movie by Big far. Time. Oh, totally. <laughs> Dude, I, we should do a phantom edit of this. <laughs> well, because there's Let's four... Do for Grace's house. Yeah. <laughs> there's spider four cut. fucking scenes of the same fucking... Ah, there's a spider. I'm scared of the spider. Yeah, Somebody yeah, get yeah. rid of the fucking spider. We get spider. multiple explanations of the rules of spider. <laughs> yes. The spider takes out the Russian mafia in this movie. <laughs> That's a really good point. It's a yeah. fucking goddamn hero spider. <laughs> Dude, it would be great. The end of the movie, Giuliani is giving this spider a commendation. Oh, man. Has anybody else seen that uh, Dustin Hoffman movie, Hero? Yeah. Where he's yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the spider is Dustin Hoffman. Oh, okay. And he saves Gina Davis from a plane. Yes, but Andy Garcia gets the credit. Yeah. Because he's better looking. Because he's better looking. What? <laughs> It's a movie from like the 90s when you could make a plane crash movie. So it's from the 1990s. Sure. Uh, there's a plane crash and Andy Garcia, Dustin Hoffman, and uh, Gina Davis are on a plane. And Dustin Hoffman is the hero. But for some reason, it's like a Cyrano de Bergerac yeah. thing. Like where Andy, Andy Garcia is better looking. So he's going to play better for the whatever. What does this have to do with a spider? I mean, he's just saying that we were say, talking like about planes and things. Yeah, if oh. he's a hero. Yeah. Oh. Looking for a hero spider. Chris is just looking for a movie that's on the public consciousness and he thought of Hero. Hero. Okay, Barry Levinson's Hero. Well, I I, I also thought you were talking about the Sam Elliott movie, The Hero. Uh, Oh, The Hero. Actually, I thought we were talking about the spider as Jet Li being shot with a bunch of arrows. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to take down the emperor, man. Oh, no, the spider in The One, where that spider has to go to every alternate dimension and kill the Ooh. version of that spider to become more and more By the powerful. way, that is a stay tuned. I've been dying to do that movie. Oh, totally. I saw that movie in the theaters. Dude, he hits himself with a motorcycle. It's a good movie. So we open on, uh, we see the kid, uh, Sam Huntington, who's playing a character named Mimi Siku. Mimi Siku, yeah. Uh, he's just kind of run, boating around. Uh, looking a lot like the kid from the never the never ending story, big a- time Atreyu there. I think he also oh, kind of yeah. looks like um, doesn't he sort of look like the kid in uh, uh the Indian in the cupboard movie? Yeah, sure. Yeah, a little bit. Isn't that just Atreyu? Did they <laughs> did they get the same kid? I don't know. No, that movie was years later. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. I hope they. I just yeah. thought Atreyu was an eternal child. <laughs> <laughs> Your he honor. Is, he is in your heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, dude, he's just working at Best Buy. <laughs> Speaking of your honor, we've got ourselves a French remake. Everybody, everybody put on your God. gloves. We got a French remake. <laughs> yeah, dude. This we love doing this in like the late 80s and the 90s, mm-hmm. man. You saw with my father the hero, mm-hmm. fucking uh three men and a baby. Just so, visiting. Three fugitives. Oh, right. Three Fugitives. What the fuck is Just Visiting? Uh, Jean Reno as, as a, a knight. knight that comes from the past into the present. And the French version. Oh, that's not the more, French version. That's Jean also Reno. Jean Reno is also he in the plays, French version. Oh, he dip our dude? Yeah, yeah he, yes, he, he double did. dipped. Yes, he, he, did. he double dip yes, our dude. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> oh, is that why Jeff Hardy was so overweight? Is because he kept like gobbling up movie roles? That's right. I think well, that's no, it, it was like, like, the, like Kirby. He's like, <laughs> well, it's like, no, it's like the one, except for you don't fight all the other ones. You eat all every version of yourself. I would eat myself. I, dude, I saw a picture of Gerard Dubardieu in the early, like, 80s or something oh, yeah. that I, dude I, could get it whoo! that dude is a snack oh absolutely oh, there's a movie god. called uh the return of martine Gare. holy god just just look out Go. look out for gerard Depardieu. look the fuck out going places which john totoro is remaking now young gerard Depardieu. yep <laughs> And that's the thing is like I never even got to be my young G- Gerard Depardieu phase. Yeah, I'm you just, just always old Gerard Depardieu. You were born yeah. looking like fifty year old Gerard Depardieu, dude. Ooh. You were fucking drinking wine, taking a piss on an airplane well, floor. Welcome to New York, like oh my god, size dude. of a fucking tanker, dude. That's that holding movie, oil. That is a horror movie. That Abel Ferrara's movie. Oh my god, that is a horror. He's that guy's Dominic Strauss-Kahn. Yeah, dude, he's a fucking monster he's in that movie. Humongous. It's incredible. <laughs> All right, Huge so, monster. How about that? Dominic Strauss Khan versus Tarantula. Call us. <laughs> call us Sci Fi Network. Uh, yeah, we're pitching the hits today. So, uh, 
<laughs> we open, uh, we intercut with what, what Mimisiko's doing. We go to uh, the, the, the stock exchange floor. And boy, are we saying something right here, aren't mm-hmm. we? Because yeah. it's like the jungle, jungle sounds. Uh-huh. And then, dude, we dissolve oh. into the trading floor of the stock market. We go jungle to jungle, my yep. friends. Oh, yeah, dude. Fucking thinking on its feet, this movie. <laughs> and uh, it's Martin It's Martin Short who's in this movie for a reason or two. And here's a quick question about Martin Short in this movie. Because... Mm-hmm. One, I think he's kind of the best part of this movie. Sure, he's Martin yes. Short. Because he's Martin Short, exactly. It's the same reason why he, i am just put this together, he's the fucking best part of that Santa Claus 3, the last yeah. Tim Allen movie we he's touched on. He's the best part of a lot of crap that he's in. Mm-hmm. And now, but here's my question, though. Why the fuck does he have red hair in this movie? Oh, that's a good question. Maybe it's for another movie. Well, you know, I was thinking of, in Kindergarten Cop, why does Arnold have red hair? That's another good question. <laughs> I don't get it. It was just the fashion at the time. I've got ambitions. <laughs> but this Martin short hair dye, man, it looks like an old woman. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just that bad, like, you were going for red, but it's kind of like blue purplish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. was like a phase, I think, like some actors were like, well, I got to play a, a character with a different hair color to make it different. Like, yeah. why the hell is Bruce Willis Dyed blonde for the jackal. No, oh, that's knows. a good call. Because, that well, might have been to he's hide. to hide himself. Yeah, that might have been. A, oh, oh, Martin Short <laughs> trying to hide. Oh, in this movie? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good he's place a to hide. For hire? Nobody fucking saw it. <laughs> Actually, what was the deal with this movie? Was it a success at the box office? Or I, what? I think it did okay. Uh-huh. I don't think it was Disney partic- Tim Allen. I mean, know. it was. It, We're post Santa Claus. Yeah, by the, the way, Santa so Claus. He's a sensation at this. point. Did quite a lot of business. I don't think this did no, even near that. There would have been a sequel if it did. I think. Uh, sure. probably. But, but Jungle when, Three Jungle. <laughs> that's that's a question. Jungle. But isn't that like what the dog movie is? Dude, that's a fucking Craigslist advertisement. By the way, Jungle for Jungle. I don't even know what it means. What does that mean? It's like furries in lion suits. Right. <laughs> that just means it's fucking swampy in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man. Well, I'm sorry, Chris Kevin. What were you saying? Uh, I mean, isn't that what like fucking hit the Shaggy Dog remake, Joe Somebody? They were they were all these attempts to mm. get back to whatever the fucking scent. What I mean, to harness just say that it. Magic. It was Christmas. It was yeah. a Christmas movie at Christmas. Yeah. Yep. You're totally right. What the fuck? Wait, are you saying that we weren't allowed to say Christmas back in the nineties? <laughs> no. That's- Chris is saying that the reason that movie was hyper successful is because it was a live action Santa movie starring that guy from that Tool Time show. Yeah. And and you know people out there called the Tool Time. By the way, yes, I know it was called Home Improvement, mm-hmm. but you better believe on more than one occasion I was like, Yo, you watching Tool Time oh. or what? Oh, there are dozens of guys in Ohio who still see like last man standing fucking mm-hmm. things and say, oh man, Tim Taylor's great. <laughs> Tim calling him Tim. I thought I heard him because Tim Allen's also on the stock exchange floor right here in this yes. movie we're not talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, at some point in this discussion, he sells something. I could have sworn coffee, he said right? sell. No, no, no. no well, he, he buys to, coffee. Right. I thought he said sell Binford. Oh, Did anybody else no. hear Binford? I thought we were making a home improvement joke there. No, I, I hope so. That'd I mean, amazing. they do do one home improvement drop. Oh, oh Wait, later we're in this movie. Yeah, we'll, we're going to get oh, there. Oh By the way, just in from the internet ticker, this thing costs 32 mil on estimate. Uh, gross uh, at the end of the day for the United States was almost $60 million. Yes, yeah, so it's a, so yeah, you made Solid your money. Hit. Yeah. It's a, a hit. critical failure of all. Oh yeah. yeah. People hated it. Like Gene Siskel said it was an embarrassment. <laughs> Roger Ebert gave this one one star, but gave the original no stars. Yeah, because yeah. he said, like, what was it? The first one was like so bad it was like fascinating, and this one was just mediocre. So No, just, no, this one was the higher rated. Yeah, one. I know. He that's why he gave it one star because it was just mediocre. It wasn't Whereas that one was completely just completely like, a bottom. He had it was seen, just forgettable. It's <laughs> a really good review if you get to watch it, if you get to read it, because it's it, he says, like, I went to see it and they didn't have the last reel of the movie. <laughs> no. And that was the only interesting thing about my experience there. That I went is back interesting. And it was awful. Wait, he, Ted, he went back? Ted, the last reel is missing and Ebert's in the audience. <laughs> I can't. Uh, let me tell you, I cannot even fucking imagine being the projectionist mm-hmm. when Raj was in the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what you got to do then? If what? this fucking happens, you got to be like, okay, guys. Get together. We're putting on a show. We're going <laughs> to finish the last reel all together. I had a manager uh, at the multiplex we would later go on to work for. Uh, 
read the ending of the film Assassins. <laughs> and he gave the option for people to leave the theater and get the refund, or he would tell you the end of the movie and then you'd get the refund. And I was like, oh, I want to see this old man read from a card. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, what happens is Tim Allen buys a bunch of stock for his company uh, of coffee, a bunch of shares of coffee. Martin Short, who's a nervous Nelly, is like, oh, my God, what are we going to do with these things? He's like, yeah, I can't be bothered. I have to go fuck off to Caracas to go uh, get divorced from Penelope. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the beginning of a movie, man. And he gets in a plane. I will say this about this, though. This uh-huh. movie gets right to it. Yes. It does, but then fucks around for the rest of the movie. It certainly does, but it gets right to it. <laughs> it, right, it, well, get, it gets right to fucking around. It, it, it gets right point. to it by 30 days out from your marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get my divorce paper That's signed. something you should have settled. That's something you should have settled a, a long year. time ago, Tim Allen. Before you do the engagement. Yeah, probably. Uh, so he goes, um, and the ex-wife is Joe Beth Williams, of course. Oh, the great Joe Beth Williams. Yes. Uh, playing, what's this woman's name? Patricia. Patricia. She goes, uh, he goes, she's supposed to be in one place, but she's not. She's much further back. So he has to go on a, a, like a, another kind of a boat ride and to, to get He's this He's got to go like embrace of the serpent down the <laughs> fucking, <laughs> he like, totally does. Dude. It's insane. And I was sitting there and it's like. Start the stopwatch, man. Like when this movie starts, how quickly do we get to Tim Allen being a fucking piggish American racist in this movie? Mm-hmm. It's under 10 minutes because yeah. it's all the fucking like, it's like, oh my God, these people are so disgusting. Yep. Don't you know what a fucking fly swatter is? And he Can knows you better English? than everyone. Like he's going down the river and he's like leaning off the boat and the guy's like, I wouldn't do that. And he's like, why? Whoa, why? Man, man, I can do it. <laughs> and you know, there's obviously piranhas in the water. But oh yes, God. This is also on the sci-fi network. <laughs> well, he goes, this makes no sense. He goes to the village and says, what is this Gilligan's Island? Yeah. You mean an island in the middle of the ocean with only white people on it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the fuck is even, what is what that What the hell reference? is that joke? What Did the- you see the show ever? He, and, but the, the thing is, you think, and he comes, the, when he first gets there, see, the, his limo driver is like, Cromwell, Cromwell. He's like, yeah, I'm Cromwell with a C. Oh, right. Like, he wow, totally what? corrects the dude's spelling on a fucking airport sign. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this movie's going to be about him. Like he's going to learn a lesson. He's a big business. So and Christmas so. Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Or he he's going to like learn. Great. He actually is. He yes. doesn't learn a fucking thing. <laughs> Not a thing. And it's, it's funny, man. If you ever want to, if you're wondering, you're sitting at home, you're like, uh, like even before all this current business we find ourselves in today uh, with today's government and whatnot, you're like, why does the rest of the world hate us? Yeah. Watch movies like this because it's fucking legit documentation of how terrible we are. <laughs> right. Like this is this is a real person who goes to these places all the time, mm-hmm. you know, and just acts like a fucking asshole, know-it-all pig about everything. And let's, uh, b- before he left, he uh, told Martin Short uh, I'm uh, buy what three hundred dollars, three hundred worth of coffee futures. This is going to become very important. To yes, the he's got. Plot. He's got. He buys all this stuff, and like Martin Short's losing his mind. He's like, "We're not going to sell. We're not going to sell." We cut back to Martin Short a couple times, and he's like pulling his hair Just out, shit his pants, because mm, that's what he's doing in this movie. And like he goes there, he meets uh, Joe Beth Williams, and she's like. She's trying to tell him, like, because apparently she just left. Like, they, this dude was so bad, and I think the other stuff was going on. You know what I mean? Like, I think she probably oh. feared for her safety a little. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little was, side piece. It was, no, it's the roaring 80s. We're talking Tim mm-hmm. Allen in the 80s. Oh, and, absolutely. You know I mean? Dude, that Coke Mule situation came up. <laughs> He's again. having lunches with Matthew McConaughey and Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> it's a bad fucking time to be alive. Absolutely, dude. He's fucking meeting Christian Bale for lunch, too. <laughs> Jared like, Leto's there. Wait, wait. He's getting dinner with Dominic Strauss Kahn. <laughs> So she got the fuck out. She left the country. I think it's because she thought someone was, you know what I mean? Like she thought something's about to go down. Mm -hmm. She's like, you know what? I can't be in the middle of the the end of fucking true romance. All right. Exactly. I'm out of here. She's like, I don't want to be fucking murdered in my bathtub. (laughs) Exactly. I don't know if Or Wonderland murdered. Like who knows what was going on in Tim Allen's apartment in the early 80s in this movie. And then Tim Allen's like, oh yeah, the Wonderland murders. I do have a 13 inch cock. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you. I fucking hate it. I fuck. I should say this right Uh now. I don't know if it's come across clearly enough just yet. Mm-hmm. You hate his cock. I fucking hate Tim Allen. Mm-hmm. I hate Tim Allen. 
He's a fucking douchebag, yep. racist piece of shit. Yeah, but He's awful. All, like, we all probably watched Home Improvement. A oh, time of course. In the 90s. Of course. I turned on Home Improvement pretty quick, I feel. Good. Did yeah. you really? Good for you, dude. I, I was under the spell. I had like maybe like two or three seasons and then I was out. And then, like, I would check back in when, like, Mark was being bullied for being goth. I'm like, that's oh, stupid. That was something else, dude. That was really great. It was like a whole season arc of, like, Tim the Toolman Taylor bemoaning the thought that his son could actually be gay. Yep. And it was like a whole horror show. <laughs> and then he realized, oh wait, no, he's it's just like a it's just like a, it's just a subculture that hasn't anything to do with sexuality. If you need to know anything about who Tim Allen is, watch the difference between home improvement mm-hmm. and that last man standing. Nope. So explain it to me. Please, um, please, please. So I I I I'll, I'll, what is right. the, what is that show about? It, what Last Logistics? man standing. Yeah, he's like the last man on the uh, on earth kind he's, of a he's deal. Running like like, he's like running a boy a, and his dog. Like a Dick's Sporting Goods type place. Okay, but he also uh, records vlogs. No, stop. In his back office stop. about like stop. masculinity. Stop. And, Is he like, running guns too? I mean, this sounds like a dangerous dude. He's a YouTube person. Yeah, he's a YouTube person. He's a cam guy because they can't. <laughs> They couldn't fit in the fucking jungle television for show. Jungle, my friend. <laughs> all right, wait, uh, sorry. I, wait, wait, wait. Chris Kapman is educating us right I, now. I'm, I'm, but, I'm so, playing with pew pew die. What was uh, that? Pewdiepie. Rough, rough. I'm playing with PewDiePie. <laughs> what was that again? He's some racist know. kid from. He from, plays video games. He oh, like that's plays cool. video games and like says racist stuff. Oh, yeah, that's, that's you know what? That's and awesome. Also, he's like an internet millionaire because of that. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, should we become internet millionaires by being racist on the internet? Probably not, but it's a good backup. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally fine with our standing right now. I'm just saying, yeah, pull that parachute. Yeah, if my student loan debt gets to, like, if they start really turning the screws, I'm going to start saying some alt-right shit. That's when you'll know. Now, hang on a second, though. So he makes vlogs uh-huh. yes, about and- what? Just like whatever is pissing him off that day. Because he nice. has daughters instead of sons. So he's pissed off about all the guys that the daughters Oh, my are God. Well, that's because of his own broken penis and testicles that he couldn't make sons. That's Tim Allen's fault, right? <laughs> ruff, 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 is my testicles. Goes? Ruff, ruff, ruff. <laughs> Bark like <right>, dog. Ruff, <laughs> Does the, does he do fucking that arg noise in the shaggy no, dog? No, <laughs> Because if there were ever a place where it was appropriate, it would be when he's I mean, playing a literal shaggy dog. I've watched a total of three episodes of that thing, and the shaggy dog. I didn't see. I didn't. No last man standing I, of last man standing, and I haven't seen any. <laughs> was that the show that Jennifer Lawrence was on with him? No, that no. was Bill. She was on the Bing El- Bill Engvall show. Oh, yes. you're you're totally right. What was that? Oh, that <laughs> Bill Engvall. He had like yeah, he, down the oh, rabbit hole. Here's your stupid <laughs> side. Here's a hey, Eric Siska. Here's your side. <laughs> yeah. uh, Speaking okay. of sides, let's get back on the path to jungle to jungle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, we are fucking all over the road, dude. We're lost in the jungle. So, uh, Joe Beth Williams is. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. Joe Beth. The big chills. Joe Beth Williams is like, hey man. And, you know, I left uh, because, you know, you got a fifth phone line and I realized what my life was. And there's yeah. a, I got a, we got an eyeball in the mail. It was really fucking scary <laughs> there for a little bit. I opened my fifth finger of the month <laughs> and I was done. <laughs> So uh, there's a guy that just sat outside our door with a chainsaw. <laughs> and I knew what that was about. Like, he didn't say well, much, but I knew what that was Tim about. Allen in a horror movie would be good. If he got butchered. Yes. Yeah. If he got, like, Danny glover in Saw. Mm. Like, he's the father of the house like he always wanted to be. Oh. Know. And his kids are being murdered one by one. And he's watching. Right. And then eventually they get him. He's like the last girl. No, you know what? He'd be perfect in. Final girl. They they fucking, they screwed it up by putting the nip tuck idiot in it. He would be perfect for the stepfather remake. I thought you were going to say Dr. Doom. (laughs) No, even better. You are right, Chris. He would be perfect for that role. Oh, that that guy, not Julian McMahon. No. Um, What if he is, he's a, he's a, he's a, a beleaguered scientist. He's working on time travel. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he's, he's like, you know, he's he, and like no one believes him. It's like a dark, interesting. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get like a, a Darren Aronofsky going in this. Oh yeah. And are you it, pitching the Doctor Doom movie? He makes it work, and he goes back to caveman times. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And now he is pal. being hunted by feral men. Oh, oh shit. And they're all going ar 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 ar, and he's like ar 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 ar. It's a reverse most dangerous game. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's like you got the the affluent science great white hunter man mm-hmm. uh-huh. and now he is the prey 
And, and they that don't, would balance it all out, dude. It's like what I keep saying. We just need to eat one billion. <laughs> just one. Yeah. A working class hero needs to rise up and eat a billionaire. Mm-hmm. That's so, all. So uh, Joe with Williams like, I left. Uh, by the way, and like he's being, he's on his little cell phone commute. Commu- like, he's got his fucking, uh, 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 speaking of girls, Congo Digilink <laughs> setup. Yeah, oh, dude, God. It, it is some like tech mumbo jumbo here. Like we're on one side of my apartment and the router's on the other. Yeah. And the fucking Wi-Fi isn't great through the brick walls of this <laughs> yep. building. You know yep. what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's and, in like Venezuela or wherever. And, and it's 1997, yeah, everybody. Yeah, and he's clickety-clacking and trading stocks like it's fine. I, no way. So she tells him he's got a son. He doesn't even hear it. Then somebody, so one of these dumb tribal people breaks his <laughs> thing. And he's like, oh, no. And he's like, so what happened? He has a son. It's Mimi Siku. He goes like fishing with him, kind of, sort of, right? This is when they start to meet each other correct yeah yeah she's like why don't you try not being a piece of shit and like just go hang out with him yeah and then uh he he survives a night of uh, uh farts dude, um dude the fucking with fart the f- jokes like what dude, uh, this is just like too bits. much fruit joke like what the f- it's all bits of his fucking terrible stand-up sure. comedy don't stand too close to a naked man or oh, whatever that thing is that was his book wait, what that's right oh i forgot it god there's also a joke in here about like native children being a litter. Yeah, like, like a yeah. Li- like, he says that to the woman who he thinks is a pig. Well, <laughs> and I got to touch on that right now. Because, so he goes into this tent yes. and Joe Beth Williams is like a doctor, but she's also, I guess, a veterinarian or something. Sure. And there was a there's a woman in there like helping her out and the woman is very much overweight. Sure. The gag, quote, quote, I'm doing a fucking air quotes, everybody. It's an audio podcast. The gag is Tim Allen looks at this woman. We cut to what Tim Allen is looking at. It's a shot of this woman. She smiles at him. And the movie, the soundtrack to this movie makes a 1000% legitimate pig noise. <laughs> and I was like, I'm done. I'm fucking done with this. But th- there is a pig in the room, an honest to goodness uh, pig. Uh, yeah, they have but, an explanation dude, for everything. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Cabin. I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> I can read that film language. Fuck you. You think she was correct here? You think, sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you think Tim Allen was Tim in the, horrible? I'm sorry. In the Steve. sound mixing booth, like pig noise. <laughs> Bro, louder. <laughs> Bro, ha, louder. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, do it right before I say that uh, natives are inhuman animals. <laughs> you know, they you know, all come out at once when they're born. You know that movie Hannibal that's not come out yet? <laughs> the pig noises from that. It's not come out yet. Yeah, this movie that'll be arriving in four, four to five years. The specific well, soundtrack from that one movie. Well, because capitalism is a disease, Tim Allen could have afforded to see it because he was making $1.26 million an episode on home improvement. Oh, Get out of here. It, in 1997 disease. or whenever, like 99, I don't know that, when. That's Bill Clinton fucking $1 million. Oh, mm-hmm. man, what a time to be alive making mediocre television. <laughs> so he goes on a little trip with his son. Uh, they start to bond a little bit. We get uh, very reminiscent of our friend Tarzan the Ape Man. A snake is murdered here. Oh, dude. It's, it's a the, hilarious snake puppet. Oh, boy, is it ever. Dude, the fucking Henson company was <laughs> laughing at this thing. <laughs> because it's, it's like a, it's a freeze blow frame. dart right yeah. through its head. Yes, and we're introducing his uh, Mimi Siku is very good with a blow dart gun. Oh which yeah, is used just a lot in this movie. Remember that you could even say the movie blows. <laughs> And, Darned. you know, they kind of, like, they start to bond. Uh, this is when the spider is introduced, our friend Spider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yes. Jim, and Jim Henson wasn't here for this. This was John Benson, and he I think was it's Mc- a cartoon at some point. I think, like, it when, it's on, the, when, it's, when it's on the beach, the wide shot, I think that's just a cartoon. I saw a downright wire pulling the puppet. <laughs> yes. There's there several of them. There's a part In where it's, office? like, where... No, I noticed it on the beach when it's like coming after Tim Allen and it's just someone pulling a string. I was like, where the fuck is Bella Lugosi? Like, (laughs) this is the level we're at right now. Shit props. Also, it's around this time when they're walking through the jungle where uh, they say something. He's like, oh, that bird's the Coco Vrono or whatever the fuck. And Tim Allen goes, 
Oh, well, that bird can't sing. It's more like a Coco Ono. <laughs> hey, everybody, a Yoko Ono joke. You getting that? <laughs> <laughs> 1997 Yoko Ono. Joke. Just oh my destroying God. Yoko Ono in 1997. He is such a fish out of water in the first part of this movie. And the reason is he didn't have Wilson as a sounding board. <laughs> he, didn't be able, he wasn't able to go into the backyard and hear about some fucking white racism from that guy. That guy was all about like... <laughs> was Wilson of, part of the problem? Yes, he, he was. He was a sex tourist, for he sure. Was, yeah, he was definitely a sex <laughs> tourist. He's also like one of those white guys that's like, oh yeah, I deeply respect this culture because dot, 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 and this is quotes, everyone. Noble Savage. Yep. The fucking yeah. Will Wilson was definitely subscribing <laughs> to National Geographic back in the day. He believed in this whole And Noble National Savage. Review. Oh yeah, dude, man, and fucking whatever else came in the. He likes covering his face. I wonder why. Maybe he's in the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> That's a great way to cover your face, I Wilson. Mean, it's a fucking white fence. <laughs> so uh, they get to bonding. By the way, uh, Yoko Ono will not say Mark David Chapman's name, and she will not say Tim Allen's name. Just putting that out there. Wow, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the only two. <laughs> uh, so they get to bonding. Uh, he's yeah. almost eaten by a crocodile. Oh right. I had my fucking fingers crossed for that one because it's like the kid is explaining like, hey, motherfucker, yeah, don't yell in the presence of this spider. Mm-hmm. If you yell, it freaks the spider out and it wants to attack you. But if you're chill, it's fine. And he's like, oh, got it. Rough, rough, rough. <laughs> and then he's the kid's like, oh, by the way, whatever I've named this other creature, uh, uh, he's always mean. And he's like, oh, uh? and there's this fucking crocodile behind him. I was like, go. Get him! <laughs> and credits. Imagine Tim Allen was just fucking gutted by a wild animal in like the first 20 minutes and of this the movie. the rest of the movie is like burying his body, taking it to like the holy place to dispose of the corpse. The kid, dude, Momosiku himself has to take the body dude, back right. to New York City. Oh, it's be- like a Venezuelan Elizabeth town. No- <laughs> No, it turns into no country for old men because all the coke money that Tim Allen still owes, the fucking cartel goes down there looking for him and they will not take no for an answer. I would love that. (laughs) Can I tell you one of the most savage jokes The Simpsons ever made and I fucking love it? Sure. When I think it's like Homer, somebody is watching Home Improvement Mm -hmm. And it's like Tim Allen backs up a riding mower through the fence yeah. and runs over Wilson. And he's like, oh, no, I've killed Wilson. Looks like it's back to jail for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I was yeah. like, fuck. Yes. Thank you, Simpson. <laughs> Dude's a felon. Uh, so would nothing wrong with that. Oh, oh, everyone pays their debts and dues. Right, there is nothing wrong. Except for people like Tim Allen who have yes. a real problem with that yeah, if I, someone I, who's I, not white pays their dues. I prefer the mafia in general. Oh, absolutely. To people like <laughs> Tim Allen. Yeah, so. of course, we are pro-mafia program. Absolutely. The show since 2010 has been 100% pro-mafia at all times. Never forget it. Mm-hmm. Other point here of Tim Allen being terrible uh, and making fucking dude dad jokes throughout this whole movie. <laughs> sure. Is they're talking about like you know these these uh, the names that these people have in the tribe Momusiku the gag is it means cat piss uh-huh. oh, and it's yeah. like the kids get to pick the name so it's funny or whatever and then they're like uh, oh you know Tim Allen they named you baboon or whatever and he goes. Uh, Oh, no, I want my name to be however it means man who is well endowed. Yeah. And then all the dads go, <laughs> that's right, Tim Allen. <laughs> Tim Allen is our man leader. Wait, why is John Reese davies in the audience? <laughs> oh, Tim oh. Allen is hilarious. Oh, because I'll tell you right now, me and Tim Allen share the same opinions about <laughs> Muslims. Tim and John in the morning. Oh, oh. that is a fucking radio show. That- <laughs> oh, God. That would get all radio canceled. <laughs> like, you know what? This is this here is the official death of terrestrial radio. Oh my god, they would have a real case against Adam Carolla. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those guys are stealing my bit, man. <laughs> Just replace Mexicans with Muslims. It's the same oh, thing. Oh, I'm sure he hates them both. Carolla. So he um he kind of bonds with Mimisiku here, and like Mimisiku has a appendant of the Statue of Liberty. He's like you know, and and the kid like speaks English like fine, but not fine. Like it, it doesn't make it sense. It improves pretty quickly. It does, and he's like, "You, you have statue." And he's like, "Yes, we have the Statue of Liberty." And he's like, "You take me to statue?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "When I'm a man, will you take me to the Statue of Liberty?" Correct. Like, when you're a man, sure. And everyone in the audience is like, "I get it." 
because the next night... It's... Oh, I didn't because I wasn't paying attention Oh, yeah, because there's a bar mitzvah, basically. Right, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets in, like, a weird bar mitzvah thing where he holds... It's a big ceremony. He gets his face painted. He, like, holds onto a hot part of a piece of a tree. And, like, and now you're a man. And basically, Joe Beth Williams is like, well, now I have to take him to fucking New York. Right. Well, and this, like, is all, this is also around the time where Tim Allen hisses at what he calls a witch doctor. Ooh, oh, that's yes. right. Holy shit. Yikes. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit, dude. It's yeah. like this dude, yeah. he's got this like uh like these like long pieces of straw over his face. He kind of looks like cousin it, which is pretty cool. Sure. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, you're he's yelling at Joe Beth Williams about the whole situation. He's like, you got me standing around this witch doctor. <laughs> And the dude like parts the the you know the straw or whatever and is like the fuck did you do to me? Yeah, well that's the thing is what the balls you have, dude. They, they, yeah. These people should fucking cut you and up. And then he also calls them the Pirates of the Caribbean. He he again yes. screams at Joe Beth Williams mm-hmm. about you left me to come live with the Pirates of the Caribbean, which is a nod to wh- Disney. What is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, but like what 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 also, what are you talking I, about? I what about th- these dudes? Uh, this whole yeah. tribe of people makes you think they're pirates of the. You're not in the Caribbean. These aren't pirates. Clearly, you're just a fucking moron. Well, th- this goes on with all these fucking jokes of his. Gilligan's Island doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, yeah pirates Finally, of the Caribbean doesn't make any sense. He also refers to them as the fucking village people. Yeah. Does that make sense? No. Uh, the closest that I think his dumb brain is going is that there was a dude in the village people that dressed like a Native American. Oh, okay. okay. So there, that, all that, that officially does not justify So it. thanks for coming to the uh, test screening for uh, Jungle the Jungle. Thank you guys. Uh, you guys are doing great. You got comment cards there. So uh, what do you think? Would you like more Mimusiku or less Mimusiku? Okay. Uh, uh, they, you got the. You remember the Pirates of the Caribbean joke? Would you like a full movie of Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe seven of those. Could you do? Okay, so you, I, you said seven. I, I've never seen answers like this <laughs> through the roof. They all want Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Uh, one, one final question, just to throw in here at the back end. Maybe call it a bonus question. And it's a, it's a word we left out of the screenplay, but Tim is really adamant about throwing it back in. Could we? Uh, would you guys mind if we tossed in a scene where Tim Allen uses the N word? <laughs> Through the roof. <laughs> Through the roof, Jim. <laughs> uh, thank you. This Arkansas test screening has gone exactly how we planned. Thank you. On to Mississippi next. <laughs> Apologies to non-monsters in both of those states. And, and yeah, in Arkansas in general. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, he kind of, you don't know what happens. They do a, like a smash cut. It's just Tim Allen on the plane. Uh, because basically like she's like, this kid doesn't know what lying is. This kid doesn't know right. what it means to break a promise. If you say something, you have to do it. And she fucking totally, I mean, this is a real biting line. She's like, and you're going to break the first promise you ever made to your son. I was like, ooh, game set match, Williams. <laughs> and this is kind of like a twister setup, right? He's doing all this for those divorce papers. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're totally right. Absolutely. It's all so he can have a legal divorce to marry Lolita uh, Davidovich. Now, cool. now I just yearn for Philip Seymour Hoffman's fucking balls. I think that's the same year. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, it might Seven. be. 97. Yeah. That makes sense. This was a sounds grand right. year for cinema. Sounds right. I'm not going to check, but it sounds uh, right. Were you uh, <laughs> uh, offended by the idea of divorce? Okay. No, that's good. That's good. All right. <laughs> Do you know what divorce is? <laughs> oh no, no, nobody. Well, that's weird. Oh, you do think you do think that uh, divorce is unchristian? Well, don't worry. At the end of the movie, we're going to undo that divorce, and they're going to get back together because this is Disney. Thanks for coming. Same thing in Twister too, man. We were afraid of divorce in the nineties. Oh, that's right. Of all right. movies that you should just make a divorce, well, you know, it isn't that way. what's eating us alive now, Steve? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, I do. I, I do remember like there was so much stuff in pop culture back then about divorce and how it's going to ruin your rotten kids and yeah, all sure. that. And <laughs> then they all got podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Steve are shining examples. <laughs> but it, I'm, that, my point is, it's bullshit. Yes, yes. And it was ridiculous. Uh, so they, they, he's on a plane. He's flying first fucking class, by the way. But I guess if it's like oh. a 15-hour flight, you better pay the extra, man. Oh, my God. That's an upgrade I need. So no uh, no uh, getting this kid in regular clothes, huh? Oh. That is something, isn't it? 
No, Isn't like, that something? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure Caracas has a store of some kind. I'm sure there's people there that wear clo- more Western clothing. It needs to be addressed. It how needs about to the be- airport? Yes. Oh, how I'll about the just... airport in J- when they landed JFK? Get, just get a pair of jeans and a vest. Even a vest would be great. And here's how you could do it, because it's such an obvious, stupid joke that Disney Buena Vista would go for it. You get this kid into a department store, like a duty-free shop at the mm-hmm. airport or some mm-hmm. shit. Uh-oh. I'm too sexy yep. clothing yeah. montage, yeah. dude. That's you don't even need to give this kid a haircut. Mm-hmm. It's totally fine. Just dude, him trying on jeans. It's 97. Get that kid in a fucking Tasmanian devil t-shirt or or, or sweatshirt. Something to, yes. Pair of guest jeans on. Bro, him. Hell yeah. Bro limit, have you not even oh, seen Encino Man? Limit the <laughs> pair of boy nips that I have to look at exactly. for a fucking 90 minutes. Someone call me the bugle boy. Is the bugle boy? <laughs> yeah, sure. Bugle the, boy. No, that, that's the uh yeah, the no. clothing company. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. That's, 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 For a second, it's, it's I thought I was the, confusing it with the Ducktales. No, th- those are the Beagle Boys. Oh yes. God, Beagle Whew. Boy was jeans. Whew. Yeah. Dodge uh, that okay. Or how about Arizona? <laughs> yeah. Anyone remember Arizona I, jeans I, I, oh, or tea? You need to get the big dog in here. I think. <laughs> oh, this get is the, the big job dog. For the big dog. Okay. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to see Mimosiku get dressed? <laughs> wow. No one. Okay. Okay. Now, right. who wants to see him get undressed? <laughs> All right, this is the last test screening we'll ever do at a Nambla conference. <laughs> so he takes him on a plane, and yeah, he does not get this kid dressed. Uh, there's some business where he's peeing on the seat or something like he's that. He's peeing the- on the floor. He's kind of pulling a Gerard Depardieu <laughs> not for nothing. Yes, <laughs> fucking Actually, pissing on that plane. I cannot piss on your plan. I piss on your plan. Dude, I love it. Gerard Depardieu, right? He's chugging red wine mm-hmm. out of the bottle in the middle nice. of the aisle, just urinating. And because it's Gerard Depardieu, he's incredibly unhealthy he's pissing blood oh, so man. it's like red wine into blood piss and it just looks it, like it's one wow. continuous thing like like when a cartoon gets like shot with a gun and just like <laughs> oh yes it, <laughs> the, it, it drinks stomach. milk and like yeah it yep. just falls out <laughs> um is there a video of this is gerard depper he actually got pissed on an airplane there and, was at least himself? photographs this was several years ago wasn't, i think there's photographs wasn't photographs. he going back to the motherland russia all right. Uh, was this before the Russia stuff? Or I thought no? that was. I thought that was about the same time. Do you think him and Steven Zagal are roommates? <laughs> <laughs> they're hey. bunk beds, but they're hey. built like industrially strong. Uh, uh, hey, Gerard. Uh, yeah, yeah. Snowden again. Um, <laughs> you have eaten all my yogurt again uh, after I've asked you specifically not to. Uh, and I got enough problems with Steve over there. This hey, show uh, is called The Expats, by the way. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and it's Steve, Steven Seagal, Gerard DeVardieu, and Edward Snowden. That's what it would take to get me to watch reality television. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Or, hey, uh, Gerard, real quick, buddy. Um, it ain't healthy when you put a bunch of chocolate sauce in your yogurt. Just saying. <laughs> or in this case, chocolate sauce in my yogurt. Listen here, you French fat fuck. <laughs> it's the last time you lay an upper decker in my toilet. It's the last time. You hear me? <laughs> I gotta go. Gotta go tend to my woman dungeon now. I swear to God, I'll put on my fucking album. <laughs> hey nerd, help me fix the toilet. <laughs> See, I would watch this so bad. Uh, you know my name's Snowden, dude. Dude, Snowden. You don't even know any kind of karate at all. <laughs> what was that? Was that uh, Odin? <laughs> Let me say it again. Say, say it to me like I fucking care. <laughs> you big S- man. Sock la blue. Where's my food? <laughs> Three, five, four, fun. I had four chickens in this fridge. Now I only see two. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Edward Snowden. I broke your grandmother's brass chair. <laughs> oh man, I can't. I can't go back to America to get that fixed. Hey, you fuck shits! Vlad's coming over tonight. I want this place cleaned immediately. He's coming over to watch the Oscars. <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh, also, so here's what's disgusting. I do not see why I have to do the dishes <laughs> if I only use one plate. <laughs> if I eat with my hands. Listen, you fat fuck! It's called the chore wheel. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm Deloise laughing. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Stephen, we thought it would be democratic to use the chore wheel. Ah, <laughs> oh. why don't you scrub the toilet brush? <laughs> 
Why is this not Why real? is Wikipedia saying that I am 400 pounds? <laughs> Eric, get in here. Fix this immediately. <laughs> oh, my. That's an underestimation, fatso. <laughs> <laughs> How good is this? This is a show or a kind of good mad TV sketch. <laughs> yes, yeah, either or. or. the latter. Steer yeah. the latter. <laughs> Uh, Here's the most disgusting thing about this movie. Okay. Okay. It takes a really long time for this kid to start wearing like Western clothes, jeans, and other things. He is walking around New York City fucking barefoot. I don't even care about the no shirt and loincloth. He's barefoot in Manhattan. Mm. I'm throwing up. Yeah. Throwing right up. You're stepping in piss and feces every everything. You know what? I won't even wear sandals in Manhattan. It's a risk. It's a risk. I know. And I know I'm taking my life into my own hands by doing so, but I'm just a sandals guy. Mm -hmm. But my God, the barefoot. You you really want to have cleats. If you're coming to the city, if, 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 if at all possible. <laughs> a bunch of tourists in fucking coma cat t-shirts walking around with baseball cleats on. But yeah, you do you do the sandal, you'll get that like black grime on the side of your foot. You're like, where did this come from? I didn't even step on anything today. It's just this town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, you know how there's a lot of, of fucking movies about us being attacked by things that are made of ooze? Yeah. They're mostly correct. Yeah. <laughs> so um, but yeah, so he, Martin Short meets him and he's like, oh. You know, Martin Short's like, oh, you know, the coffee price is down. It's like, oh, I thought I told you to sell, but the, 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 the thing didn't go through or whatever. And Martin Short's a coward, so it fucked up. So it's Martin Short's fault that they're in trouble with their boss. And like Tim Allen is just walking around like, could you imagine if everyone in this room, if I was like, oh, man, I got to go to, uh, yeah, my ex-wife who you never even met and never heard of. I got to go get <laughs> divorced. Uh, I got to go to Caracas for a long time. And I come back with like a fucking 13-year-old kid. I'm like. That's my son. He lives with me now and he doesn't wear clothes. A thir- yeah, a 13-year-old kid who I can see 70% of his ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I see so- uh, sowing your royal oats before the wedding. Oh, <laughs> very smart. It's like, it's like dude, yeah, th- 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 this guy would be under suspicion of sex tourism immediately. Of course. Of, like, he went there and bought a child. <laughs> yes. and, and, like, this fucking high-rise, uh, like, this, he brings him to work. Yes. And, like... Maury Mandelbaum from fucking Stay Tuned is his boss. Yes. Oh my God, that's where that, it was driving me fucking and crazy. Why isn't his first line when seeing this kid, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is that? It, that's the joke. It's a what is that joke, right? Like mm. he's talking and then he stops and he goes, uh, what is that? And you know, the kid's fucking like, Eating bugs. Oh, off it's the my floor kid. Or something. It's my kid. Who cares? Quick part when they get to Manhattan that I thought was interesting and made me wonder if Al Qaeda enjoyed this film. Oh, please. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> they're walking yeah. around barefoot, disgusting. And the kid is like, uh, like, oh, Babu, where is all where is all the animals? And it pans up to the World Trade Center, and yep. that is where all the animals are. Oh, it could be, dude. Yeah, WTC think. is featured prominently. Makes sure. you think. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. Like, you couldn't do that today. You couldn't <laughs> pan up to the World Trade Center. <laughs> you actually could not. Well, or use Freedom a, Tower, CGI, as it were. And, and that say that that's all. where the animals are. <laughs> no, yeah, you couldn't do that. I, I don't think all the so. animals are. <clears throat> that is, that, that is, is like stockbrokers and so on. And yes, so that is strictly a pre-9-11 yeah, joke. I, I, I did not hear that in 25th Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you mean the first movie to deal with 9 11? Yeah, they didn't throw that in there. Although, you, wasn't Barry Pepper? There used to be animals up there. <laughs> wasn't Barry Pepper kind of like a racist in that movie? Somebody yeah. was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Shit. Everyone's yeah. a racist. Um, <laughs> so, he, uh, the boss chews them out. He's like, oh my God, you know, you're on the hook for this million dollars that you. That might be lost if this stock keeps going south. I don't know how stocks work. I was just about <laughs> to point out part of the confusion in this movie is I have no idea how the stock well, market guess works. Guess what? No one does. It's 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 stupid. It's farcical. Yeah. It's all about confidence. I would suggest nobody in this movie knows what they do. I don't think. No. Because there's a fucking one scene where they have like the ticker. Yeah. And all it says. Is Commit suicide now. Coffee plunges. Yeah. <laughs> coffee plunges. Yeah. Number letters. <laughs> Number coffee letters. plunges. How do you just invest in coffee? <laughs> It's a good question. Hey, hey, nerd, what's all these number letters all over my screen? (laughs) Oh, it's a stock market, sir. (laughs) Sir. Chocolate blue. It's like we've been gone into the matrix. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, no, Stephen, this is encrypted. This is this is supposed to be encrypted. No, but these are number letters. Dude, it would be awesome if Gerard Depardieu's favorite movie was The Matrix. <laughs> Probably, I wouldn't be surprised. But he just keeps watching it because he doesn't get it. So he's like, I'm going to watch this until I can figure it out. What's the title of this show? Because we got a workshop. Is it Enemies of the State? uh, Frenemies of the State. Frenemies of the State, I like. I would put that out there. I suggested the expats earlier. The expats expats is good. Is it set in in Russia? Oh, they're they're in the same Russian apartment. We need a pun. We'll get, we'll get there. Let's, yeah. let's just leave it out there. I know someone on the internet's got it Not already. Not the red triangle. <laughs> Look at this, Gerard. They say that I'm the best action hero there ever was. Yeah, pound for pound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best action hero in Croatia, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, don't drink Croatian. Guys, this. I got a lot of healthy snacks here. If you just let me put you on a regiment, you'd both be back in fight and wait. Guys, could you also keep it down? I'm working on a paper, even though I'm not in school. I want to stay on top of things. Hey, Joden, or whatever your fucking name is. Those nut things have bacon in them. If not, fuck it. I gotta say, Chris Cabin, the best Steven Seagal. Oh, it is. I've I've just been sitting over here falling in love all over again. (laughs) It's unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, so... Basically, they have this movie starts to like, and it really should just be this is my son. How do I deal with my son? We're doing Encino Man for 90 minutes. And it's at the end, he chooses his son over over a business, right? That should be the entire movie. That's it. That sounds like 90 minutes, Steve. Mm -hmm. 90 minutes tight. (laughs) And and you know what? If you want to throw in the following line of dialogue, if you keep it under 90 minutes, I'll allow it. Sure. Which is. Whatever you do in Venezuela, do not try the chili con fuego. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then he just Jeez. goes and takes a shit. Christ. I hate it. I fucking hate That's Tim so Allen. Mean. So I, I, I kind of didn't really catch why exactly there's a camera crew following his, uh, uh, his fiance. fiance. <laughs> She's like so, trying to become like a you, celebrity or a big uh, you business know what? lady. I'm actually, because I thought I had the same thought and I think it has some, because if you watch videography, yeah, watch I, thought tra- it, I thought that watch the trailer for the, uh, the original, the French original. Uh-huh. Uh, they like take it literally like frame for frame. Oh, like, really? There are shots that really? are just the exact same. Oh, yeah. and in and, France, there's just paparazzo. Everywhere. Yeah, That's like life. I think this was probably something in the original she, that made a little bit more sense. She says that, oh, they're doing a profile on me for the fashion channel. And even Tim Allen's like, what the hell's the fashion channel? <laughs> and they kind of just keep moving. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, okay. So it's not a wedding bit. So no, it's literally okay, about so then this, her fashion career. The fact that Tim Allen punches one of these dudes in the gut at one point in this movie. I yeah. thought it was a dick punch. It's a dick punch. Dude. Is it a dick it's punch? It's a total no. dick punch. Oh, my Lord. And it's the dude nobody cares. It's the, one of the dudes from uh, Star Trek Enterprise. So t- Tim oh. Allen goes to yeah, her. See, I told you. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm moving right along. I'm not, I'm not going to give that even a beat. You know what? No. That's fine, dude. Don't even hit the brakes. Just keep going. <laughs> And so, slam right into that wall. Tim Allen brings the kid to her job. Uh, there's this camera crew there, which we already explained. They do also say that the jungle bloke helps her image. Oh, well, right. Yeah, like, like, oh, this, w- kid. this kid, this dude with the blonde peroxide hair. That's like the Spike. guy from Enterprise. It looks like Spike from Buffy, dude. I, I think, thought, I think James I thought Marsters it, watched this movie. I fucking yeah. thought it was Marsters, dude. I was like, whoa. Oh, never mind. He he was, says, like, was, how, was this person in a loincloth? <laughs> What? No. Spike? Oh, no, no, no. Spike is Oh, no. The, oh, yes. Yes, he yeah, does yeah, look yeah. exactly like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was really confused there for a minute. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, no, 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 no. So the TV guys are like, oh, the rainforest is really hot right now. Sure. Oh, which right. Is true in two ways. Yeah, get that joke? Do you get it? Yes. Tim but Allen also was like, like, I don't like these bougie jokes about global warming and deforestation. But also, like, it was it was big a big issue. We had the Medicine Man with Sean Connery. We oh had God. Fern Gully. Of course, had, there was a lot. Like, it was it was seeping into the pop culture. Man, the Medicine Man, dude, that fucking movie. <sighs> what it means is that I found the fucking cure for cancer, and I can't remember where I put <laughs> it. Which is welcome to the mm. test screening. Would you guys like him to find the cure for cancer? <laughs> No? Okay, wait. Okay, so he could... Would you like it if he lost the cure for cancer? Would you like it even more if he lost the cure for cancer and then he got mad about it and yelled at Lorraine Bronco? Jim... Jim, literally every card from the Medicine Man screening is blank. Oh, every one left. of them. Nobody everyone cared. Yeah, nobody, everyone cared. Just left. nobody cared. So, um, uh, yeah, so at this point, Mumasiku, like, kind of goes on a ledge 
to get something or he thinks he sees a statue of liberty wants to yes. look at it better i guess yeah 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 so he goes out on this ledge it's a whole thing tim allen brings him back in everyone applauds there's a there's a, a <laughs> homosexual man who is, is in two scenes this one and uh, one right after it there's a and couple of gay cartoons in this movie he keeps fainting yes, yes. which is a joke that tim allen wrote <laughs> he originated it. Yes. The one time he faints is uh, when they see what is his name, Mama Siku. <laughs> Mimi, Mo- Mimi, Mimi, Siku. Mimi Siku. Mimi Siku. Yeah. Uh, is eating dog food. Yeah. <gasps> no and, cat food. And they do this fucking scene that's like right out of like it's like the yuppies from Beetlejuice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Distraught at the idea. Oh well, I never in Manhattan, dude. This fucking old Lincoln Center donor starts vomiting. They bring, but so like at the end of the the fashion scene, someone's like, "Get that kid some clothes." And like, good idea. He's in this fucking Cosby sweater in this scene, man. It looks it is, bad. It is nuts. It looks terrible. The the, the why, not, why not go middle ground? Not don't give him all of the clothes. Give him some of the clothes. Yeah, let's take it like a t-shirt at a time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why don't you go and buy him clothes? This is clearly just something you found in some fucking dresser somewhere. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, just to quickly touch back on these gay cartoon characters sure. for a second, because the dude. I guess like in the credits, it's like gay one and gay two. Probably have to like be. Tim Allen dictated the credits in this movie. <laughs> uh, but so like the guy who's got more dialogue, he says here when Mimi Ziku's out on the ledge, he goes, uh, uh, oh, she's pulling a, f- he's pulling a Fay Ray. Yeah. And I was like, the monkey <laughs> pulled her out of the apartment. Mm. What are you talking about? And I was like, this movie's written by somebody who like, Kind of remembered King Kong, but didn't bother to rent it on VHS well, before yo, writing the screenplay. When you see it in the middle of a cocaine binge, <laughs> one cannot be expected to remember the details. From the set of King Kong. Yo, you want the monkey to pull her out the window? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds, sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's make more jokes that don't make sense. Uh, I love it. So whatever. They... Um, he eats cat food and someone else faints. The, the same gay guy faints again. Yeah. And like Joe, is it, who is this lady now? This is Lolita Davidovich. What is she from? A uh, bunch she, of stuff. She yeah. kind of floated around in the 90s. I mean, uh, she's in Hollywood Homicide. I'll oh, throw okay. that out there. She is uh, scantily clad in this movie. Oh, yeah. absolutely. She was in she, Adventures well, in Baby's Why else to be? Why else would a real man get married unless it was to a scantily clad babe? <laughs> Wait, that's my attempt at the rough, rough. Yeah. How do you do it? <laughs> riff, rough. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh, Tex Avery cartoon. Welcome back to John and Tim in the mornings. <laughs> yes, and, oh, how big are your tits, madam? <laughs> Madam, are you calling in from a Muslim household? Yeah. Hang up on her. You have a bountiful bosom. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Sit on the Sibian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's like a Howard Stone. Oh, absolutely, show. man. Oh, now oh. it's time for And Another Thing in Tim's Corner. <laughs> Oh, and now welcome back to Bad Dates, wherein our producer goes on a series of bad dates. <laughs> Remember well the movie I was in? Yes, well done. Okay, that, yeah. That's <laughs> fucking good. I was drinking some water that's all right. during the delivery, but that was very we'll, we'll fun. Right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we, they don't like each other at all. It's a couple that makes no sense. Like, he's a, like, they, they do say, like, she's like, oh, you said you didn't want kids. And he's like, yeah, I know. And there's this line. And again, like, it, it, there should be a learning moment at some point in the movie where, yeah. like, he's like, oh, you know, look, we'll have this kid for a week or two. I'll take him to the the Empire State, uh, the the Statue of Liberty, and then we can go back to being uh, irresponsible and only in love with ourselves. Like that's like he says something yes. very similar to that. Like he's very, I don't know. That's like Tim Allen's mantra in real life. Sure, it's in love with himself. Yeah, he so, wants. That's what he wants to get back to. So here's the thing. Uh, yeah, I have a screenplay rule. Um, after 35 pages, uh-huh. you're no longer allowed to introduce the Russian mafia. That's a good point, man. Yeah, uh, the you, window is closed. <laughs> you're 35, you need to have like a news report about the, the Russian mafia in the first 35 pages. Like that's at least, that's the absolute yeah. minimum. We didn't get this right till Eastern Promises. And this, <laughs> this, David, David Cronenberg watches and he's like, well, it, it comes in too darn late. 
It's Although the, I like that Ogden Steers. He's, he's a good <laughs> size for a Russian. It is the dumbest Russian mafia I've ever seen portrayed on screen. Mm-hmm. They try to amplify the Russia thing by having him, the, this the David Ogden Steers playing yeah. the, the head Russian mobster. The, the late great sitting, David Ogden Steers. Yeah, RIP, man. Sitting under a portrait of the late great Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, I'm thinking to myself watching this movie, like, why would a devout party member even defect to the United States? Why would you ever want to have that? If you were truly, like, trying to, you know, yeah. become a capitalist, yeah. why would you have a portrait of Stalin? Yeah, like, you can't do both of those things. No. Either you defected and now you're making money in the mafia or you're back there hanging this is paintings. Like, okay, Andrew, you hate Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Let's say you... Correct. you Fucking flee America. Yes. And you live somewhere else, but then you would put a portrait of him up? <laughs> yeah, that's the exact same to, thing. To fool yeah. the rubes. To get them scared. But if I was in the mafia, man, nobody cares. No, nobody. I don't care yeah. what the rubes think. I'm killing the rubes. So they're trying yeah. to offload the stock of coffee because their jobs are in, and necks are on the line. Yes. And Martin Short's like, I got an idea. Let's go to the Russian mafia. And I'm like, what? Tim he, Allen brings the child to the mafia. Don't meeting. bring Jungle Boy to this. <laughs> oh, 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 No, Ooh. you should bring that to that, yeah, that is, How is that movie? How is that song not in this movie? I'm sorry, that is Tarzan Boy. We're going to have to take some points off the table there. Uh, <laughs> hey, here's a question, by the way. Uh, would you have liked it if uh, Andrew got that joke right the first time? Or? Was, Tweet uh, about it. I'm sure he'd <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to read it. It wasn't Jungle Boy. It was Jungle Life. Also, and uh, really quickly, just to make him more happy, just uh, give him your thoughts on Shrek. <laughs> See how much he cares about that. Here's the thing, though. We're gl- we're glossing over what I think is the the singularity when it comes to Tim Allen. Oh, jokes. wow. I think right. I found it. Okay. It's the Tim Allen joke, mm-hmm. right? So. Martin Short calls him up. He's like, listen, I have a buyer for these stocks that we're going to, the coffee futures or whatever, we're going to yeah. offload them. He doesn't specify mafia right away, sure. which is what you want to do because you want to get him to come to the meeting in the first place. Mm-hmm. You want to spook him by saying mafia. You sure. wait till he gets there. <laughs> so Tim Allen is like, hey, little kid, uh, we have magic in my jungle too. Watch this. Put your arm out. Kid hails a cab, right? Oh, right. So, the, so this cab pulls up. Oh, There's God. a Sikh gentleman, maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe it's a Sikh gentleman hanging out the driver's side seat, right? Mm-hmm. D- driving this automobile, if you will. Sure. The kid goes, wow, magic. To which Tim Allen quickly volleys back to this child. Yeah, magic will be if he understands English. Oh, that is what, dude, he, every time he enters a taxi cab, a restaurant, <laughs> a store... <laughs> A hospital, a black <laughs> church, any of these things. That's his first, those are his first words. Does anyone speak English? I just Ugh. can't. I, Ugh, I can't. I just fucking can't. Confused language jokes. I think just prior to this, there was an interesting one about pussy. Right? Oh, right. Oh, this? God. This fucking Wait, We're making pussy jokes? There was. Now, the spider, I guess, is named Pushy. And the spider gets lost. It's like my tika, my my tika. He yeah. says that, but he says pushy. Or no, whatever. I think that means. I that's think that what means he's ass. actually. I think he's really? talking about her vagina when or he's, her ass. Oh my yeah. god, ass or vagina. Okay, so it's not a joke. It's an actual horror moment of this film, <laughs> where he's running around the house. Tim Allen goes to work. She she's just yeah. alone asleep, and uh, oh, he starts right. yelling pushy, and like. He barges in on her and like she's like that you're not gonna see any more pushy around here. Like she's she's referencing it back to Well he him lifts as, up to the blanket, she's yeah. asleep, and he's like, Oh, you have a nice pushy pushy. Oh he says God. you have a nice pushy pushy. I, yeah. I thought he was just you know doing gibberish looking for the goddamn spider. No, he's doing gibberish looking for something else. Holy Toledo. Yeah, that Shit. kid is living in the hallway until Tim Allen gets home. <laughs> That's what's happening. No, no, dude, you know what? It doesn't matter because uh, she gets held hostage in the bathroom by that spider. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is where we're kind of like jumping all over the place. But this is where he he escapes the apartment because Tim Allen's like, uh, you know, he says, like, we'll go to the Statue of Liberty tomorrow. Uh So then we come to this day. Kids like, hey, let's go to the Statue of Liberty. He's like, "Uh, tomorrow. Rough, rough, rough. Mm -hmm. Kids like, fuck that, dude. This lady and her pushy are locked in the bathroom. I'm going to go. To the Statue of Liberty myself. And he goes, and they're like, 
they're not referencing this, but I wish they did because of the way the original scene goes. Mm -hmm. He's crawling all over the top of the Statue of Liberty. Like he crawls out of the the crown and he's on top of it. And they're doing some like really bad green screening rear, rear projection shit. And I was like, oh. Maybe this could be like the final scene in Hitchcock's saboteur. Yeah, this kid will yes, fall yeah. to his fucking death. <laughs> That'd be amazing. In, in reality, the, the the original has uh, the kid climbing the Eiffel Tower in one scene. Of course, yeah. And, and then this is a whole fucking thing. Also, though, that kid would be shot dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, also, no I, you know, you can't crawl out the fucking top of the Statue no, of Liberty. They like don't, that. Yeah, they, they don't it's not like the that. Ghostbusters where they were hanging out of that crown, too. You get up there, it's fucking four little windows, and you're like, Fuck, I waited in line for this. And yeah, you do. You put jelly on the sides of the inside of the Statue of Liberty. It won't dance. <laughs> I've, I've, Sorry, tourists. It won't dance. Ooh, Mythbusters. <laughs> um, I also, spent my entire way. tax return on Smuckers. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Dude, no, he, tax, tax refunds, man. We're no, out of no, our mid-20s. No. Yes, we don't please. get those no more. So he winds up. Uh, but one, one of the things, the reason he's in New York is like, his chief to become a man, he has to like get the fire from the Statue of Liberty for some. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so that's whatever. The, the 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 chief of this village, Tim Allen, kept calling the skipper. So they go to this sketchy Russian meeting. Uh, David Ogden steers is being scary. Uh, Tim Allen's like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, we're gonna leave. He's like, Martin Short, <laughs> right. do not sell these stocks to these Russian mobsters. Well, I don't want to end up dead. They want to also like launder money for them or yeah. something. Like Martin Short's like does this apparently. He's like, well, I real... thought the whole thing was like they bought these coffee mm, futures right. and then coffee was tanking and they're yeah. trying to secretly offload them without them without the yes. mafia knowing that it's tanking. Yes. 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 And so basically David Ogden Sears buys a million dollars worth. He gives Martin Short a million dollars in cash. And now that's happening in this movie. And I'm like, what the fuck? That was kind of, uh, I hesitate to use legitimate laugh, but when, because like Tim Allen realizes what's going on in this scene. He's like not happy that they're involved in the mafia. Sure. And the guy like sets down the suitcase and opens it. And it's just like loose bills everywhere. And he just turns to Martin Short. And I don't remember exactly what the line is, but it's like, Cash, great, yeah. And I was like, "That's oh, fuck you, Tim Allen." That's kind of funny. He could do some stuff sometimes. Well, I mean- <laughs> most of most of his talents are yelling. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really have jokes. He just well, yells well, in me, different voices. That's Nasty why his, be- to people. his best movies. Uh, what's that? Uh, Red, Red Belt. Oh no, Galaxy Quest. Yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, Quest. yeah. Uh, Martin Short, you know, does does the thing. He sells all these stocks. Um, at some point, Lolita Davidovich gets. Tired of Tim Allen. I think it's got to do with. Uh, I think it's after the Poochie Poochie incident. It's that, and then like they they uh, she's like, we need some time alone. So now like he dumps this kid off with Martin Short, and I'm like, what? And now Martin Short has a whole well, fucking family you, that have you, to be like, it's, what about Bob? And I'm meeting the family, well, dude. It's insane. I, it's it's Lily Sobieski. It's the woman from that episode of Seinfeld yep. where George breaks up with her. She's he calls her pretentious. Yeah. yeah, she's doing Jerry's accounting stuff because he's getting audited. She goes to the nut house. Yes, and she's in a bunch of stuff. But Senior yeah. Trip. She's uh, Matt Ferrer's love interest in Senior Trip. Oh, wow. And Very Matt nice. Fre- that's just, wow, that's just the 90s right there. Yeah. So I love uh, Matt Frewer. And there's this kid, there's a, the, a young a young boy uh, who plays his son, oh, who boy. I went to high school with. Get out of town. Yeah, man. I mean, I knew that in advance. Yeah, yes, yeah. just for the show. No, we, show. we are just asking you to please leave and get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> so what was this kid like in science class? I, I no, he was younger than me. Oh, uh, he was like two years younger than me. So I didn't so deal with it. Like I didn't. You bullied him though, right? Like <laughs> relentlessly. Yeah, you, no. beat the, you beat the shit out of this yeah, kid. I, right? I was not a bully in he high was school. Your locker meat. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> just when you, it's a kid that you shove in lockers right you know that he's uh this kid because this kid is suppressing a ferocious bronx accent this entire time oh my god dude that accent is yearning to break it's free it's like a lion roar <laughs> it's, it's a come cr- through hey, crazy hey there mr taylor can i get your autograph on this here uh pizza box <laughs> i mean it's it's fucking great dude because you know People in our inner circle will know, like, if you get some some alcohol in Steve Sadek and you put him in close proximity to his brother. Yeah, sure. Who's a great guy. Sure. But Mark Sadak was not so concerned about growing up to cover up this accent. Steve Sadak has sort of eradicated it in public life. But boy, will it come to life. I'm not. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah. Is it, I mean, <laughs> is it yeah. a conscious thing? Do you, like, listen to, like, Canadians talk? And, like- <laughs> That's why I say you boot so much. <laughs> yes. You like study Pat Kiernan from afar. 
like a monk. It's kind of interesting because when I go home and I with my family, my right. trash accent comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are half trash. Yes. <laughs> On my father's side. Um, it's just, wait, is this, so wait, <laughs> is his introduction before or after they bond at Jill Stein's band party? Oh, so, no, this so, thing. Oh, my God. You nailed it, dude. You nailed it. I was like, where is this music this coming from? This movie just stops dead. Like, they're just running around. I think it's uh, Washington Square Park. I thought, it was, I thought it was Central. Central. Oh, Central Park. Okay, yeah, they're walking the, around Central Park. It's the Park. big CP, dude. Okay, they're walking this around Central fucking Park. fucking song, man. And, like, <laughs> it, it's right after the Russian Mafia is scene. And, like, it's just this jam band. They with have a woman two singer. lyrics. Yeah. Two lyrics. Yes. It's, uh, uh, oh, no, I don't know what it is. Do you have it? It's my life. I do what I want. Yes, that's what they say. It's over- my life. I do what I you want. You know what it is? I mean, Chris it's Cabin. It's my life. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is on a loop. Chris nailed it with with Jill Stein's band, but it reminded me of all the fucking bullshit dancing and singing you see these people doing in Wild Wild Country. Yeah. Just all of that. Oh, yeah. Dude. All of that gesticulating. <laughs> and like, if we weren't in this massive public park, we'd be fucking. Like, sure. And, then <laughs> and it's just like all these like New York types, like uh-huh. Abel Ferreira's there <laughs> in a fucking red Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> but I think it's sort of trying to be the, this. Like, 45 is there. Yeah. <laughs> It's the most ambitious crossover of our time. Basquiat's <laughs> hanging out. Bernie Getz is there. Look out, everybody. Here comes Bernie coming. Um, Train party next. <laughs> no, but they, I think it, this is sort of the mission statement of this mishmash movie mm-hmm. where it's supposed to be like, you know what? Family is whatever you find, man. You know, like one yeah. of those kind of bullshit. Well, because these are all lost souls. They're mm. Manhattan's yeah. lost souls. And he teaches guys. Tim Allen how to dance a little bit. So and whatever. Boy, oh boy, do you know? You can just look at Tim Allen in this scene. He's like, oh boy, hope nobody thinks I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the old Utah one step. So they <laughs> they wind up sending uh, Mimi Siku there while Tim Allen tries to save his wedding, his wedding or whatever nonsense is going on. And um, at this point. Uh, like the kid starts fucking up Martin Short's house while he's not around. He fucking eats, it up big time. He eats all of Martin Short's ex- incredibly expensive fish. And I mean, like, it's fish, and I know that's a joke, but like, those were his pets. He had an emotional bond with these fish. Maybe yeah. a sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like a bigger, like, a fucking, like, because it was just a normal, like, aquarium. It wasn't yeah. like a really nice one that you would house five thousand well, dollars well, that's the thing it it's it's just a regular degular mm-hmm. to use a steve sadek expression sure. fish tank yeah. right it's not the fish tank that you would own if you were fucking these fish which is i think what this character is supposed to be doing <laughs> yes well you yeah so it's like these small fish that get eaten and destroyed and then he he, he he's moaning that it's like ten thousand dollars that how much these fish cost yeah. that's Ugh. just for the insurance guy oh, he's like laying it yes. out there for okay. everyone that's that's fair and um, so, and like he starts to flirt with uh, Lily Sobieski Not, dude, there. They go all the way. <laughs> but, they, are they, you that's kidding That's the me? breaking point. When Martin Short's like, okay, you fuck up my house, you fuck up my fish, and now you fuck my kid. <laughs> it's really there. I mean, they wait, they're fucking making out on yeah. this part, on this hard. bench outside. Making out hard. Dude. And they, they sleep together all night there. Yeah, yeah. They go and smoke. <laughs> the mother is definitely impl- implying like, yeah. like, oh, you know, I guess it's good that, uh, you know, the first time happened here. That's a, she does have that great line of, well, if it had to happen, at least it happened at the house. Yeah, they go <laughs> and she starts, sm- they smoke a cigarette and she starts singing Lord kind of acapella. <laughs> That's and, right. And then all of a sudden, you know, Martin Short's like, get the fuck out of my house. Like, well, you know what's going to happen, yeah. Martin Short. <laughs> first, <laughs> their legs will stop working. <laughs> <laughs> then... <laughs> How, how does that work there in Killing of the Sacred Deer? I think it's, yeah, their legs will stop working. Yeah. Then they won't they they go to the hospital. To eat. Yes, yes. They'll refuse to eat. Yeah. They won't want to go to the hospital. Yeah. Ble- and ble- bleeding and eyes is the last one. It's the last one, and then it's going to happen. So that's, yeah, that, that's the curse that Mima gets. That, that, I mean, that's the, uh, honestly, this is just like the beginning of American Honey. <laughs> This- oh man, Mimi Ziku and fucking Lily Sobieski are going around selling bogus magazine subscriptions. 
Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, there's like a sensual fish grabbing scene. Well, so Mimi Siku's trying to do right by Martin Short here. He's like, oh, this fucking idiot got peeved about the fish incident. <laughs> yeah. So let me go replace these fish. So he's doing some classic grade A swamp fishing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. He's like standing in this, I guess it's a lake behind their house or some shit. And he's just got this bucket and he's catching fish with his hands. Yeah. This is like a magical pond in Zelda. There's trout <laughs> and bass. And, and they're just fucking- all there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. I think the fountain of youth is back there. <laughs> and like, then like Lily Sobieski is like, "What are you doing?" And like, he goes behind her and he shows her how to do it. And he I'm goes like, oh, behind my her, darling. <laughs> oh. Like it's the scene from Ghost. Switch yeah. out pottery. Put in hand fishing. He wakes up. And Martin Short wakes up and finds these two kids in a fucking cot together. And he's yeah, like, "You dude. know what, man? They're Catch like, him in cot with a goblin." <laughs> they're like intertwined. Yes. Well, they're- how else are you sleeping in a cot, man? Yeah. Not a cot. A hammock. But I'm, I'm saying, sorry, dude, ham- hammock. Fully clothed, by the way. Okay, but you're come on, dude. Dude, a nice warm Connecticut evening. First of all, this kid doesn't wear clothes. Yeah. So, oh wait, he's got pants at this time. Yeah. He's yeah, he pants. wakes up. He's but wearing a fucking big dog t-shirt. He doesn't <laughs> know, but 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 he doesn't know. Mimi Siku does not know, like a post first Hanji uh, protocol. Listen, like yeah. the girl yep. should know enough to be like, I gotta go about back up to my bed. Yes, yes. go fair. under my fucking bed and just fucking totally. sleep. Cover it up. But listen, cover man, it up. You're young. You're full. You're jacked full of hormones. Sure. And. Your genitals are rubbing up against each other all you night just did long. Some hand There's- fishing. <laughs> After this sensual hand fishing, mm-hmm. um, they, we go directly to they go to meet with the Russians again. Yes, and uh, David Ogden Steers takes out a fucking hand of black caviar mm. and shoves it in their face, and they don't want it. Mm. Yeah, that's symbolism. You know, you pregnant oh, uh, egg, fish. He pull, right? oh, very pulls good. it yeah. right yeah. out yeah. of yeah. Very the fish. Good. A, a thoughtful movie. Yes, um, <laughs> a thoughtful at, movie. There's a bullshit part right there where they're like, a ham and a ham. Let's get out of here. It's the ma- 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 mafia. And they leave. And Martin Short, it's kind of like hilarious, like New York now, New York then kind of a thing. Because they're basically filming this. You can see Manhattan from where they are. It's basically like the Brooklyn Navy Yards. And Martin Short has some line about like, oh, yeah, you left me in this terrible neighborhood, Tim Allen. Because yeah. Tim Allen like peels out and whatnot. And I was like, you know, nowadays you got to make like seven figures to live on that waterfront. Seven oh, yeah. figures to walk on that waterfront. Yeah, I got arrested the other day, man. I only made fucking five figures. <laughs> they kicked me right out. The the what do you call it there? So uh, what they do is they wind up they they buy back all the because basically Martin Short gets a, a, a thing of cash uh, for the stocks. And it's like, I think it's just the same suitcase, isn't it? Like, it they is. didn't do anything. He with gives it. it back to the Russians because the stock drops even more. It's yeah. worth less. He's like, here, look, I'll give you the million bucks you, you did. We'll just call it even. They did. And then the stock soars again. Right. And now David Argan Stewart thinks he's being ripped off. At some point, Tim Allen knocks the cat out with the blow dart. And he makes this is when he makes the noise. Yeah, he goes, oh, no. Because I think someone on set was like, hey, Tim. Hey, Tim, when, 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 when are you going to do it? Do the thing. When are you, hey, Tim? Uh, when are you gonna do it? Okay, no, no, it's great. This is this is not the scene to do it, but you, you are going to do it. Right? You're gonna you're gonna grow like a dog, right? Uh, <laughs> Tim, you know the guy who plays Wilson didn't like the uh, themes of this movie, <laughs> uh, so we couldn't get him. Could you do a good old grunt for us, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they. I mean, this can't. What if what if, instead of Martin Short, what if Richard Richard Karn was here? What about that? Oh man, this movie could have used some Karn I, I kindness. Agree. I agree with that, one hundred and ten percent. Totally. This, so is this is the same year as There's Something About Mary? Because it's almost the same scene. Ninety seven. Yeah, yeah we, when, we, 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 sure, so. why not? When Puppet ben, animal trauma. Yeah, when kind Ben of Stiller's trying to get the dog back right, to yeah, life. We're gonna. I'm. Not, I'm gonna start looking stuff. There's. Uh, there's something about Mary was 1998. Oh, so oh, what and, stole from this movie? And Twister. Oh, <laughs> uh, Fifty-eight minutes ago, we were talking 96. about ninety-six. Oh, people shit. remember they got memories. Why don't you check Dante's Peak just while you're at it? <laughs> okay, I think that is Chris Cabin. I think you might have hit ninety-seven. I on think the that's head. ninety-seven. Oh. Anybody so getting me... boiled in a hot spring in this movie? Oh, Edward Dante's wish. Peak. Stay tuned. Nineteen ninety-seven. Dante's Peak. Motherfucker. Oh, damn. And Edward Snowden is a robot. <laughs> um. So whatever. Um. He he knocks his cat out. I think this is what kind of like 
makes what's her face upset and like I don't know they, they no the, Lolita they, Davidovich does not notice this it's this whole gag where like they're they're hanging out at the apartment they're having a real staycation because she's like fed up with this kid hanging around yeah. so they're having like a romantic night in so she's in the robe and whatnot and she's like oh let me go change into something more comfortable and at first I was like yeah. that robe looks pretty yeah. oh fucking I got it and she's showing her Disney tits all over this movie mm-hmm. absolutely uh, so. Then Tim Allen produces two of the ugliest champagne flutes I've ever seen in my life. And they're like, it's they're terrible. Just look at them. It's fucking terrible. Trust me on this. They're awful. Are you in the dowager not pleased? <laughs> I, dude, they're fucking gross. Just look at them. So he's like, I'm going to pour some champagne. We'll hang out. And he's like obsessed with this fucking blow dart. Yeah. Gun, right. So he like. Goes to shoot it. He hits. They've got a gong in the apartment, sure. like you would in the 1990s. Because they are Beetlejuice yuppies. That's yes. that they yeah, are yeah, exactly yeah. Beetlejuice yuppies. And it like dings off all sorts of Asian art around this yeah. apartment, and then just hits this cat like square in the heart and <laughs> falls down. And then we just have Tim Allen like physical comedy with this stuffed yeah. animal. Yeah. She never sees it though. What happens is like we cut away to another scene back at Martin Schart's house, and in the interim, they fucking have a great night. And then oh. when we get back to them, That's it's right. just Tim Allen being like, "Oh, cat, you were out cold. Rough, rough, rough. I fucked that woman. That cat rough, would rough. be dead by yes. the way. Oh, if, yeah, if, if it could knock out a grown man, it would kill a cat. D E D dead. I mean, they're killing birds with it earlier in the film as yes, well. The cat would be dead. Um. So Martin Short's like, "Oh my God, the mafia is coming over here because basically they they feel uh, uh what do you call it? They're uh, they got scammed. Yeah. They got scammed because now the stock is soaring and this their their liaison was like." They broke every bone in his body. Like, these are some serious who, dudes. This dude is in stuff, right? This yeah, guy who keeps getting beat up. He's one of the lawyers in private parts. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah, That's the yeah, last yeah. thing I remember, but he's, he's, in, he's been a bunch. He's of just one of those dudes like, who's spazzy, probably in a, a Sonic commercial or two. <laughs> he's been like a father in 500 episodes of Law and Order. <laughs> this might have been a good role for Richard Karn. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, get him in fuck, there. fuck, dude. Yeah. Right? You know, like, oh, Tim, I got my arm broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim, you know I can't act. So uh, it's could you a, give me a bone here? It's a good escalating gag in the movie, though, because like every time you see this dude, he's got more casts on his limbs. It's and a so, Nordberg joke. It is. Yeah, yeah it is. you're totally right. Actually, Steve is looking at me with shooting daggers. No, no. The Nordberg joke. You fuck. <laughs> you get that reference. Fuck. They are stealing from Nordberg. American no. crime story. The trial of Richard Card. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck, if they found out that Richard Karn murdered, like, some family feud family. Dude, check the basement, man. There's a mass grave in <laughs> That's there. That's a great... I, that that hose commercial he was doing? Who knows what he was doing with that? Hose? Thing. Yeah, he was, like, hawking yeah. hoses for a while. Like an extender <laughs> hose. Because he's, like, he's gobbling up Bob Vila's scraps. Yes, really. exactly. Like, that stinks. Yeah. So, um... Is he dead? Richard Karn? Bob Vila. No, don't even joke about oh, Richard Karn. they're all Karn. dead. Bob Vila, I... No, everyone's alive. No, yeah, Bob Vila is still doing commercials he, sometimes. Oh, good for him. They um classic. Sorry to interrupt, but no, classic. Uh, this old sc- house. <laughs> classic, dude. <laughs> now, yeah, I knew the classic was better than the new ones. Shit, sure. man, this is the one where he fucking fixes that door. Look out, and hey, nerd, this old house is on. I told you before, I don't like watching the old one. It's just the new ones are bust. That's a stupid fucking fuss. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of that, Bob Vila. Stupid fucking fuss. Oh, those renos are going to take them over their budget big time. How about a smart house? <laughs> what if there was a key card to open the door? Shut up, Ned! <laughs> There's not enough hams in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> but I picked up hams last week. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, now, Steve, you mentioned the idea of Edward Snowden being a robot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just thinking about it a second ago. He'd be an amazing C-3PO. Oh, oh fuck. yes, yeah. yeah. When Tony Daniels gives it up, yeah, take a knee, Daniels. <laughs> Snowden's time to just shine. film those film Star Wars Record in it over Skype. It'll That's be the fine. only way I'm allowed back in the country is if I dress as C3PO full time. And by the way, Chris <laughs> Cabin, no, he needs to get in that fucking suit. Yeah, okay. No, uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, there is a thing. Sorry, so there's a thing here where Martin Short, it's he's flipping out about the mafia coming to his house, yes. but he's also peeved. At the kid, what because, was thinking he diddle his daughter and whatnot. Sure. But he has a line here where he says uh, that 
the kid ate $10,000 in sushi. Oh, yeah. But I was like, I saw what went down, and he totally cooked them fish he over roasted. a fire. Yeah. yeah. So that's fish. just another ignorant white people joke. Well, the, he also does... It's Ding! The same, put it's, it on the board. <laughs> anything that has to do with fish is elitism. That's like the whole thing oh, with these right. fuckers. Yep, totally. And But like, yeah. Uh, uh, you ever eat fucking carp? Well, <laughs> Nothing see, elite about carp. See, in the 90s, we were like cheeseburger rich. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we're like fish rich. Ste- yeah. Steaks and cheeseburgers back then. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Steak, well, a super well done steak, a, a Trump steak <laughs> was the finest meal you could eat. Well, it's true though. It's 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 like yeah. You, now we're much more into international foods. Like there's you know like we're, we're, we'll eat Indian food now. Like people know what food is. For people the most part. do know what food is. It's true. But instead of just cheeseburgers, and anyone who ate sushi was a weird frou frou what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of where this is going though, yes, right? It's like yeah. that savage yes. ate sushi, <laughs> and you're just like, can everybody just shut up? Tim Allen shows up. Um, the mafia is on its way. And Lily Sobieski, because I think um, uh, Martin Short threatens to send her to an all-girls camp. Yes. Uh, yeah, he sure does. And, like, he's trying to sl- open her door. We gotta, he's going to uh, fucking dictate this young woman's development, I'll tell you what. <laughs> he's running right into a door over and over again. He can't do it because he's small uh, oh, Martin oh, Short. Oh, my God. That's and Oh, my God. It's Listen, it sucks, but it's, it's funny. Martin Short. Yeah. It's, it's Martin just, Short being funny. I actually think your classmate has the best line here. Oh, here, cool. This is when the Bronx accent comes up. So he winds up. Um, <laughs> and you uh, have to do it when you say it. Of course. A ta- Tim <laughs> Allen <laughs> Tim Allen comes out and they're like, all right, what if we both do the door at the same time? Right. They do. Uh, and at that point, Mimi Seek was like, oh, my, my, Babu is here, my dad. So he opens the door. And they they run through it and they go off a ledge and into a balcony into a Dude, gazebo. They fucking Devon Dudley this picnic <laughs> table. I've never seen anything like this, man. They both go through this table at the same time. I was like, my God, Tim <laughs> Allen is dead. Someone should be dead. There should be at least an ambulance involved now because <laughs> this is because insane. If you house a picnic table from above and like it's that, a wooden picnic table. Yes. It's legit. It's not like a plastic yes. Dude, one. It's out. This thing is turned to sawdust. I'm not. Not sure if you're dead, but you're definitely not getting up. Your bones are shattered. Yeah, you're They're not gone. getting up and making jokes about it. So he falls over, and uh, this kid who's not been a character in the movie is like, Whoa, awesome fool, dad. Like, it's just like awesome. That's, awesome is a hard one for me. I gotta go. I have to say, mm-hmm, Awesome. That's awesome. I, I want to say awesome. And so I bad. let that freak flag fly, though, dude. I say <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You awesome. gotta, you gotta awesome. shift to awesome. terrific there. <laughs> Yeah, that's terrific. <laughs> that's all my Austrian accent really will come out if I say awesome. So I say terrific. But then fall too. Fall, it's awesome. Fall of the fall. Oh fall. my god! What fucking a- spaghetti sauce fell out of that kid's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, that wasn't my favorite line, Steve. Oh, oh, oh shit. Uh, well, enlighten us. Oh. When they're trying to knock down the door, the kid, of course, because I, it, it opens up such a door to this kid. <laughs> He's like, Does let's it? smoke them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I'm yeah. like, oh, secret pyromaniac. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. Martin Short would definitely produce a kid who is a pyromaniac. And that gives that kid something, right? Imagine that was a gag from the jump. Yeah. Yes, this exactly. kid just keeps lighting fires. Martin Short's freaking out about it. Absolutely. Dad, I just lit another fucking fire. <laughs> and it wouldn't be fire. Oh, no. I, fire. I'm, I mean, father, I am... I, wait, with fire his and nose starts for, bleeding jesus you know what tim i can't do it okay i can't fucking do it all right i'm sorry i'm fucking sorry i got fucking author <laughs> avenue in my goddamn fucking veins you piece of shit and you know what tim allen while i'm on it you're fucking racist bro it's gonna that go out with garbage yo your son's got a herb haircut yo <laughs> Yo, JTT's got a herb haircut. I'd, I'd muff that kid. Dude, I can't even... Fuck, dude. I haven't heard someone called a herb <laughs> in like 12 years. Oh, yeah, man. Yo, Mr. Allen, I haven't had sauce in like 24 <laughs> hours. Could you do something about that? It's like, you know how you get tired when you don't use the N-word after 13 hours? Dude, I am fucking running on fumes with this sauce. You also have to make it from scratch. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, none of that I'm going to drink some what? fucking Prego, you Ooh. Rag- Ragu, ragu, By the way, gaba goo, get brick. out of here! It's brick his balls out here. <laughs> Why am I not wearing a fucking shirt? Who's this pedo directing me? And then, 
that's something that's never addressed. Yeah. It's like the, the Martin Short son starts looking up to this kid. Yeah. And he's running around nude like this guy. Yeah, I don't know, dude. There needs to be something where like this kid does something that he sees. Yes. You know, oh, maybe, maybe he could do. Make, make out with his sister. Yeah, dude. <laughs> tongue kiss his sister. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's like I'm in fucking Arkansas over here. Make it on my sister. Kiss, kiss, Sobieski. <laughs> so uh, she... <laughs> The mafia shows up. Yeah. Uh, fuck it, fuck finally. Him. Yeah, oh, oh, fuck them. Oh, no, it's the, it's the Russians. <laughs> it's not the Morris Park crew. No. So they, uh, <laughs> those are some fucking pipe hitting Cosa Nostra. <laughs> so they wind up, co- they wind up uh, breaking into his house and they like, seize the house. But uh, Tim Allen and Mimi Siku are not in the house at the time. Right. So it's like up to them to save the day. <laughs> uh, Martin Schwartz gives him back the stocks. But they tie him to a chair. Anyway, I thought, I thought they were going to cut his dick off, man. I, I really was hoping for it. And for it. Like David right, Ogden Steers is just like, you'll not have any more children. <laughs> right in front of his fucking family. Oh, beautiful. dude, yeah, just fucking cut this dude's balls and up. And right feed it to him, too. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to me, Mr. Allen. <laughs> Are you actually telling me that David Ogden Steers isn't part of the Russian mafia at a Sunset Park? <laughs> <laughs> we got deals with those people, Okay. This kid's worried that his on-screen performance is going to upset some IRL mafia <laughs> relations. How many theaters is this coming out? <laughs> what hotel are you putting me up in in fucking Idaho when this movie comes out, you fucking prick? I gotta eat, I gotta eat fucking egg noodles like a schnook. What is Hollywood's version of the Witness Protection Organization? <laughs> So um, they kind of seize the day. They come in. There's this, and this is a, this is the weirdest part of this movie. I feel like Martin it is Short, very weird. I feel like Martin Short didn't like this kid because he keeps being like, "Bite him, Tommy! Bite him with your crooked teeth!" And you look at this kid's <laughs> mouth, and it's kind of fucked up because he's like, "Whatever." Yeah, dude, like, it looks like that when Lisa Simpson has that nightmare about getting <laughs> braces, or but, when they're showing you the computer simulation oh, and the yeah, tooth goes through her it. lip. That's but like it. it's like he goes, hey, but your fucking crooked teeth, and this kid's like, oh fuck him! You think you're on SCTV? You can tell no. me what the fuck's up. That's another good line though, is when his his father the short says that, and then he's like, no offense, he's like, none taken. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, right. I'm sorry, but no, 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 none taken. Oh come on, Martin! Try to get all you all those rainbow cookies. You gotta be a fucking dick now. <laughs> Shit, bro. Have I you, said I like Clifford. I didn't even like Clifford. Have you ever tried Los Angeles sausage versus <laughs> New York sausage? Oh, man, you can't do that. It's the water. <laughs> <laughs> crooked teeth. You can't even crooked teeth like fucking bat. <laughs> Give me you a know. fucking crooked dick. Yo, you know the jerk, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the jerk. jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so they wind up... They win the day. There's a really Thanks to that spider, dude. It is the spider's movie. <laughs> oh, yes. By the way, we did. Did we mention that there's like a 20 minute sequence of that spider at the office that's chasing? It's, it's, it's unbeknownst to the boss. It's crawling all yes. over him. Yeah. And Tim oh, Allen has to like yell to get the spider to chase him to leave that the is office. Where, that's where he uses that fucking chili con fuego line. Yeah. Because he's good. like. He's basically saying like, hey, boss, remember when I was like screaming a second ago? It's because I had to take a fiery shit. Yeah, violent shit. <laughs> I've, I've used that excuse too many times. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry for all that profanity in the meeting. I had to take a violent shit. <laughs> uh, boy, uh, Steve, have you ever heard of a story called The Boy Who Cried Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> the Boy Who Cried Fiery Diarrhea. One day you will have a violent <laughs> shit and you will need that excuse. <laughs> they wind up winning the day. The spider, uh, David Ongus Jr.'s is terrible. I had a f- spider. And this spider, am I right here? This spider is like on his head. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, legit. dude. Oh, wait. He, he was one of the like bravest it. actors. <laughs> I would not allow it. No, no I way. would be like, I'm not, first of all, I'm not appearing in this a movie. A puppet that Secondly, big? No way. <laughs> no, that's not a fucking puppet. No, there's cabin. a real, oh, that's the real deal. Spider trainers, dude. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's that. You know, sense. those are weird people. Well, no, sp- how much you make as a spider trainer? No, seriously, though. That's you, pretty good. It did. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Is yeah. there a guild for that? Man, do to, bro, like, do you have to go to college for that or what? When I was, a trainer. When I was a kid, I went to a, um, this is. This spider is, school? It's sort of like that. You, you'll <laughs> oh, see in a second. Oh, Not really, but um, <laughs> I, I went to like a camp, uh, at like a day camp situation up in the, you know, the hippy dippy cat sure, skills. Sure. And the, the guy that led the nature walks that you were supposed to go on to was like, Hey kids, uh, 
My name's Spider. Oh, oh really? Yes. Were you yes. in Bushwhacked? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You tried to wander around the woods with a guy named Spider, and he had like a soul patch. Anyway, Yeesh. that's all right, dude. Remember that one time we did karaoke, and that dude was there who called himself Spider Jones. Yes, he might be something. listening. I think he's not a the same guy, by the way. If you're wondering if there was some type of romantic, <laughs> wandered back into no, Sp- <laughs> Spider Jones definitely was a 40 year old man in Ozone Park that lived with his mother, S- Siska. Haven't heard that name in years. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, that was the night Chris Cabin and Eric Siska sang Girls Just Want to Have Fun. It's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. It's it beautiful. was a great night, and you all missed out on not being there. <laughs> I'm so, sorry that you weren't at The Quiet Man in Ozone Park that <laughs> random night in 2008. And I'm, yeah. I'm also sorry. We're never going to get to the end of this movie. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's never gonna, it's I'm doing my best, everybody. <laughs> all right, Steve, say that. I've take, got the brakes right here. Take no, us home. So no, uh, they they the Russian mafia cowardly and comically runs away, which is not how this ends. No, we're cutting dicks off. No, I mean they might leave now. Okay, sure, yeah, we'll leave you now. Bye, and yeah. then like they come back and everybody's dead. Totally, like, yeah. your, your parents, your parents' friends, the whole thing, everything goes. The down. mailman, that dude's dead. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> shove his uh, head in a pizza oven. So at this point, Mimi Siku just kind of is like, yo, dude, I don't want to go home. And it's like, wait, why? Like, it, it doesn't have it. No. Again, it should have a thematic thing where, like, in the middle of the movie, there is an emotional climax about the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah. like, there's a, the word obligated is used. Yo, like, shit, man. Lily's pregnant. I got to get out of here. Get to Caracas. Well, that's one of the things that could have been, right? She's yeah. like, maybe she's like, I don't want a boyfriend. I'm just a kid. Like, yeah. Whatever. And he's, like, heartbroken. or It has you know, no whatever. effect on anything. He's just like, I miss the tribe. Like, okay, so hey, he's like, hey, I'm gonna great. go. So he goes. Uh, Tim Allen sees him off. He gives him a, st- an, st- a Statue of Liberty lighter, and it's like, the, dude, this is this is so irresponsible. Th- well, well, yes, but one thousand percent pre nine eleven. We are oh, yeah. talking walking your your guest to the gate. Sure, we are talking lighter on a plane. We were talking about a bow and arrow. We're talking <laughs> about a bow and arrow out in the open, the ever loving open, dude. That is not an overhead compartment item, and deadly, a possible poisonous spider, yeah, or and deadly blow darts mm-hmm. that one of them hits fucking Martin Short's wife in the head, dude. Headshot. Tim Allen fucking takes that woman out. It's outrageous. <laughs> so uh, he sees him goodbye and like. Tim Allen's like, oh boy. He has one more scene with Lita Luda Davidovich where it's like, why don't we, you know, go on a vacation together, just you and me? And we'll he's have... trying to make it work. And she's like, uh, she's got the whole film crew there. She's like, ooh, that's not gonna work for us this day or that day. And he's like, yeah, I guess I know where this is going. End of that entire relationship. Everybody's out of the movie. There's no like blow up or like, hey, you'll be better off without me. Maybe you do that stupid thing where they have an amicable breakup. Like, yeah. no, nothing, nothing. There should be something. And, and listen, nothing. here's the thing. Like, this movie is already one hour and fucking 45 ever-loving minutes. Sure. Give me an extra five to get all this stuff in here. Yeah. You're already pushing two hours. You already fucked it up. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to fill in these blanks, man. And then uh, he goes to work. Uh, what's it called? Maybe you could give him a blow dart gun, a right. the blow dart gun. And he's like, if you catch a I'm spot. Glad that, I'm glad that ended in dart gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a way to say goodbye. <laughs> he wants. <laughs> It's, pay, it's, pay, it's I'm Patreon. Sorry. Oh, it's been Patreon. It's, <laughs> it's done been Patreon. This and week. this has been Patreon. Uh, he's like, if you if you ever catch a, spy, a fly with the blow dart gun, you could become a member of the tribe. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, he has, he's a fly on his boss's back and he blows it and his boss falls down. And this is, I got to tell you right now, this is some fucking cowardly filmmaking. Because mm-hmm. did you notice what's going on here? So they're down on the yes. trading floor. It's the boss, Martin Short, and Tim Allen. And the boss is walking with Martin Short. He's happy with them now because they, they made all the money back. Yeah, the so. coffee money came back. Everybody's fine. <clears throat> Tim Allen notices this spider flying or a fly flying around. Mm-hmm. And it lands on the boss's back. And Tim Allen wants to take the shot, mm-hmm. you know, to get take, his, to get his, yeah, t- uh, take the shot, uh, to get his son's good yeah. graces, yeah. right? But the way the movie, this, I feel this is a Disney move right here. They're like, Tim Allen can't just shoot this yeah. boss in the back, mm. you know, unjustified. So what they do is there is some embarrassingly lazy ADR yep. where this boss, you don't see, it's all from behind. He's got his arm around Ma- Martin Short mm. and it's all this ADR about how like Martin Short's the best and Tim Allen's a piece of shit. Yeah. And it's like, 
um, there's uh, the justification. Yeah. So did you? Uh, who liked the fact that Tim Allen <laughs> killed his boss at the end? Did you think the uh, the funeral scene was too much? Oh, okay. okay, okay. So, oh, so you, would you rather? <laughs> this is a would you rather. So it's like a, a you know, it's a yes or no kind of thing. Would you rather Tim Allen's boss uh, says a couple of kind of mean things about him, right? And Tim Allen is clearly out of earshot, so it's just for you all in the audience. <laughs> Following that logic, would you just like a movie about bosses being killed? Because <laughs> that's what I'm getting from these cars. Yes. <laughs> that looks like right through the roof, Jim. <laughs> So then he flees to Caracas to to not be charged. Yes, I think so. And I think that's why Martin Short comes with him as the Russian mafia, like, killed the grandmother last week. You know what I mean? Exactly. Martin Short opened the fucking freezer and (laughs) Grandma Nona's head was inside it, dude. Because, like, you know, we cut to Caracas and, you know, it's on the beach. And, like, uh, Tim Allen gives him a cell phone uh, and he he gets a call. Sat phone. A sat phone. It's got to be sat. He picks up the phone. He's like, oh, hey, dad, how's it going? He's like, look behind you. And there he is. Oh, and he's like, oh. Tim Allen, he's in a fucking seersucker suit. What are we doing? Get a Put pair a of t-shirt shorts. On. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, shorts and a T-shirt at this point. He winds up and he's like, oh, I wish Lily Sobieski is here. He's like, well, you know what, Junior? Look over there. And the whole fucking short is family there. That's weird. And also they're doing like a really bad, like, this family isn't used to this environment, mainly Martin Short, because he's got like the super sunscreen yeah. on the nose it's only. Mm-hmm. Captain Ron in 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were so right. I think it's also like a sequel. Setup. Like the, M- Martin Short's looking at this part of the script. He's like, this all seems very familiar. <laughs> And you know it's another tough word for a, a young, a young scrappy kid from the Bronx. Yeah, nauseous or uh. nauseous. Oh, Dad, I'm so nauseous on this boat. <laughs> oh, my wrong this boat. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. this poor kid. Yeah, he did his best. Um, <laughs> so and that's then we go to credits. And he's like, but the weird thing is, like, you're gonna stay forever. He's like, oh, I'll stay for a while. That's what, it's kind of crazy. He's like, well, for a while, yeah, nice but, dude. L- longish vacation, still building the out. Uh, Always thinking on his feet, this Tim Allen. And he looks at uh, Joe Beth, Joe Beth yeah, Williams, of course. And you keep she on looks, her name. Yeah, I know. she looks because <laughs> I want to say Mary Beth, but I don't. She looks at him like you kind of made it, and he gives a shoulder shrug. Well, no, dude, it's 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 a little more precise than oh, that. Because earlier in the film, Tim Allen, when he first goes to the island, mm-hmm. oh uh, god, yeah, he sees Mimi Siku give a girl in the tribe oh, a, pot. a pot. Sure, and so Joe Beth Williams explains that in this culture, oh, right. when I, you I give a pot, that. it's like a sign of love. So Tim Allen rolls up and he's like, "Rough, rough, rough here. It's a real pot, not like your wooden pot." Savages, and, and that reveals that Lily Sobieski is actually his side piece. <laughs> oh, oh shit! For all, for all of the fucking you know romance and everything, he gave his heart to some this this <laughs> kid down here. But it's yeah, you're totally right. But then it's fucked up because the last shot of this movie is Tim Allen. He pulls the pot out of the bag, and Joe Beth Williams is like, "Divorce is meaningless," <laughs> and it's like freeze frame on Tim Allen shrugging his shoulders, like, "I brought a pot because I'm horny." It, it it would be so great if they cut back to her and she was just like ho- in horror. Like, oh my god! What? Oh my god. Wh- why would you? And then her I, girl, I, I hope you, her girlfriend <laughs> comes out. Like, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. who's, I like, signed I, the fucking papers. I, yeah, you get back in your boat and go the fuck <laughs> home. I hope you brought that pot to piss in. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's the one. Let me introduce you to Janine. <laughs> That uh, would be awesome. It would be great. Instead, um, is, is Janine the name of her vibrator? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I introduced a fictional girlfriend, Chris, and you oh. heard it. Oh, I thought it was yeah. like oh, the, the friend who was a uh, girl. Yeah, wait, okay. Oh, wait. Chris thought he was calling to John Reese Davies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a good one. <laughs> and then this movie. Welcome back good. to Vibrator Talk. <laughs> Vibrator. <Chat. laughs> vroom, vroom. Uh, Tim. <laughs> this week we try out the one from Shape of Water. <laughs> Ew, that's real. And at the end, I ride a vacuum to see if that gets me off. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> 
Uh, oh, but so then they have the audacity to have like a slight stinger scene here yeah. where Tim Allen is becoming a member of the tribe and sure. he's got to like put his hand You know what? Because the- that's the poster. You have not paid off the poster until You're, the end, yes. end credits. And do you think, I feel like this was the thing where they had made the, po- the movie was done. They made the poster and then it was like, oh fuck, that's super racist. Better justify it. Yeah. And then they added this scene. Did Possibly. anybody anybody get a note on Tim Allen's hair length at this, at this no, point? No. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah that's should've. a good point. Could be a reshoot. It's just got an awful. An un-CGI'd mustache, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Tim Allen is Superman. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah I guess that's probably for another day. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he grabs the thing and he burns it. And he goes, oh, my hand. And that's like the end of the movie. Look at my hand. And he just like I guess he's just running into the water to cool it off. Nobody seems to really care, which is kind of funny. Yeah, and then yeah. we're just back. Well, then it. no, that he was eaten alive by piranhas. <laughs> oh, Everybody sad. had a nice, nice time. The last time we see Mimi Siku, by the way, he's totally making out with Lily Sobieski in that river. Nice. Yeah, dude. Everybody's making thirteen year olds kiss. Oh yeah. Yeah, in Dis- front that's of the Disney way, dude. In front of that girl who has his pot. It's just <laughs> fucking disgusting. Oh right. The yeah, girls the girls holding the pot like, hey. Brendan, you piece of shit! Who's this white bitch? Yeah. You have a whore living in your village. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh man, and that is jungle to jungle, everybody. Uh, Whew. That's a lot. What a, what a wretched undertaking. That was a toughie. It was a tough one. We had fun with it, though, I think. We oh, all yeah. A little something. A little something about the movies and about ourselves. Uh, about Bronx accents. Sure. A, they're a real we thing. We learned yes. what is legal and not on Patreon. <laughs> Uh, would anybody recommend this movie? No, no. I, I despise Tim Allen and uh, <laughs> this kind of early 90s Disney fair or mid 90s or late 90s now. Yeah. You know what I mean? That 90s kid movie shit. We've talked about it. It's This yeah. is a bad example of it. Yeah, wild, no. Wildly inappropriate. Like that's the Disney '90s is fucking wildly. <laughs> Film critic Chris Cabin raves wildly inappropriate. Oh, that um, does sound never, like a never watched this movie. Never ever watched this movie. At an hour and forty five minutes, it felt like seventeen that's, hours. That's audacious. It dude. is boring as fuck. I also say <laughs> pass on this one. <laughs> uh, nice. Most definitely, I will say. Oh, t- I have a question. Two questions. Uh huh. Not to prolong this. Or is episode. it one question with two parts, or is it two actual two questions? No, I think it's actually two questions. Is so, Duchess Joe Beth Williams the best part of this? Yes. <laughs> Guaranteed. No, I think Martin Short's the best part, but Joe Beth Williams is right there. Not a lot of screen time for her. Question is, was this movie uh is this one of those things that was like popular in the late 90s? If you were of a certain age, are we gonna be like, oh, I love that movie? No. Probably. Is there that? Yeah, there might I mean, be somebody. This was popular with us, right? I'm not popular, but I remember seeing this as a kid. I've never yeah. seen this. I never movie saw it. Uh, really? I had never seen it in its entirety. I think I caught some of it on TV. Did you go to see it in the theater? No, I definitely saw it on television. Mm-hmm. And uh I it was kind of just like whatever. Yeah. It was like, what? Well, I didn't care. Well, that was the thing. I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I never met the kid from Jungle to Jungle in my school, but everyone was like, oh, that kid from Jungle to Jungle just, just is in our school now. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I thought, always thought for a long time it was it was Sam Huntington. And I was like, he's Jimmy Olsen. And someone's like, no, it was the other kid. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so here's the second question. Mm-hmm. Can we name a non-Toy Story Tim Allen movie that we would recommend? I mean, it, I'm just going to say Galaxy Quest. I already uh, said Red Belt. Is that yeah. the name of it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the Belt. only yeah, non Galaxy Quest. So, but, so it's literally only Red Belt that is uh, is tolerable. That's it's him and Chiwetel as you four. It's David Mamet doing a fucking like fighting movie. It's, Chiwetel's in it though, right? Yeah, he's, he's the, the main, main guy. dude. It's pretty interesting. It's not great because it's Mamet. It's, it's overridden like and, and, crazy. But. Big yeah. Trouble is not a movie I would recommend. No. That's a terrible movie. Yeah, I don't um, like I don't know if he's like been... Uh, Joe yeah. Somebody's Terrible, which is also Shaggy the same Dog. director as... I think you could probably General get away Jungle. with saying the first Santa Claus movie. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. That's the, honestly, that might be his actual... Apex. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, technically best movie, maybe. Mm-hmm. I would still pull for Galaxy Quest, but that's a I would close too. Second. I would too. No, like I, I detest the Santa Claus, but like <laughs> it's, it's, good well, the but it's, it's well made and it's yeah, structurally yeah. It's a tight sound. story. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah, the it's nuts fun. and bolts are there. Yeah. Galaxy Quest is, is is probably the best. Yes, yeah. 
I think I found something that may rival it because I remember like who is Cleo's Trout? No, 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 no. Uh, that movie Zoom. Oh, Am that I thinking superhero of the, movie? But is this the right never one that I'm thinking it. of? That? Oh, is this no. the thing with uh, Kurt Russell? No, 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 sky high. high. Oh, never mind. Then fuck it. Hang yeah. up on him. <laughs> Hang up indeed. That is Jungle to Jungle from 1997, directed by John Pasqueen. Thank you so much uh, for supporting our Patreon and continuing to do so. We greatly appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, we're sorry we put you through Jungle to Jungle, but that we hope you had it. some larves. Yeah, a laugh or two, hopefully. We already uh, put you through Ghost Rider. This should have been pretty. Yeah, cool. that's actually true. This is a cakewalk at this point. Uh, so, and then just to give you a little tease for you subscribers only, what yeah, you're going to get you next made month. It this long. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you made it. We, I know we're pushing two hours here. There was a lot to cover in Jungle to Jungle. Who would have guessed? But. <laughs> Well, what with the dissertation on Bronx accents and oh, all. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, or detour, not dissertation. Uh, no, but so in the month of May, Chris Cabin, what are we bringing to our Patreon subscribers only and never to the unpaying freeloader public? Uh, Johnny Depp's Computer Ghost, Transcendence. Oh, ew. That movie is a wild ride. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's trash time, and it'll be trash time next month on the Patreon exclusive We Hate Movies episode. Until then. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cabin. Eric Siska. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.